Hello everyone, and welcome back to the next episode of Star Trek Adventures The Expanse. Uh, no real notes for me today, uh, so we're going to start off with the uh, ship's log of the day, which due to plot reasons is going to be given by our first officer. Take it away. First officer's log, star date 84553.5. Our first excursion into the Lasai Expanse has been so far made, an made for an interesting voyage. While investigating the fallout on Ankenfall, the away team and I had some odd interactions with the native Scorpi. We brought aboard several of the injured Scorpi, and many of them seem well enough to return. Dr. Forliza has reported to me that they feel like they should not be allowed to return to the surface until they have all procedures completed, and have had time to heal aboard the Concordia. I feel that we can try to set up some kind of rehab programs in the holodeck to aid in their recovery, and maybe we'll learn a little more about their medical treatments. While we're still in the system, the Astroneer Guild has come to me and asked us to take part in what they are calling a Space Harvest, which seems to be a hunt within the neighboring systems. It seems not much different from the gatherings we used to need to do on Nutalix, though with more dire circumstances than we ever had to back in the Delta Quadrant. After addressing the request with the captain, he has seemed rather energetic about not only observing the event, but doing it from one of their own vessels. I feel slightly apprehensive about that, since I don't want to end up being the new commander that lets his captain befall any serious injury, or worse, on his first voyage. Considering sending a member of the security team to accompany the captain, I may see if we have any members of the Scorpio among security to avoid any cultural altercations. On a personal note, I feel that the ships should make some upcoming time to allow for some more opportunities for social interactions and cultural exchanges. Considering making a request to Commander Dolorum at Deep Space 15 concerning the Lasai species convention that they had in the previous year. I think it would be a great idea to get insights into the Expanse's races so that we have more ideas on common ground and common thinking. I felt a little unprepared considering my own inexperience during the last encounter with the Scorpi. Growth will only help me grow better and more adept like father. End log. All right. Uh, so we are going to cut to the USS Concordia is currently en route to the staging area for the fleet that's being put together to hunt space whales, or whatever it is the heck they're hunting. Uh, but, in the me top priority is we have to save a Scorpy's life. Which is going to take us into sick bay with Dr. Ferliza and a very sick-looking uh, Scorpy, uh, ver Scorpy oral priest uh, sort of slumped down against the surgical bio bed. So... Uh, you have, you've had him on the ship long enough, uh, Doctor, to realize that he is suffering a significant amount of internal injuries or internal degradation brought around by inhaling toxics uh, that were released into the atmosphere for a significant amount of time. Uh, it's going to be very de uh, very time-consuming, uh, very, de very delicate, and quite a bit of a... Uh, well hunting and pecking, because as, uh, the only records you have on Scorpi biology are provided from uh, long, de long desiccated corpses provided by the then Chief Medical Officer of Deep Space 15, a.k.a. Galen. Uh, they were only corpses. This one's alive, so it might work a little bit differently. Actually, it is working, which puts it slightly ahead of the ones Galen had to deal with. So, good luck. Okay, um, looks like we got a lot to deal with here. Um, Dr. Quith, Lieutenant Krim, I'm probably going to need about as much help as I can get, so any assistance you can give me will be greatly appreciated. Okay, so this is going to be an extended task that's going to, rec that's going to take place over at least the first half of this session. Um, so it's going to be a work track of 18. It is going to have a difficulty of, of 
It would be difficulty five, however, because you're in sick bay, that gives you an advantage. So I'm going to knock. So you have a choice. You can either uh, start off with a difficulty of five and a resistance of four. Okay. Or you could have a difficulty of four and a resistance of six. Okay, and this is because your uh, part of this difficulty increase because of the fact that I'm unfamiliar with the species. I've already taken that into account. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Um, and you said it was either difficulty five, resistance of what? It's either difficulty five, resistance four, or difficulty okay. four, resistance six. Ugh. Um. I think you go with the lesser think, resistance or difficulty. Yeah, but the higher resistance is going to be a bitch to work through, too. Mm, you know what? Good point. Difficulty goes down as you make breakthroughs. Yeah. That's true. And I have Surgery Savant, so... Which gives me the triumphant effect on uh, like extended tasks relating to surgery, which oh. this is. Okay. So um, we're... Let's go... Yeah, the higher difficulty, lower resistance. Stiff 5, resistance 4. There we go. Do I want to make some rolls for packing so I can get some momentum? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, we're starting you off real quick, aren't we? Uh, so... Uh, um, if, so, uh, who wants to pick up, so you can either be assisted by, well, because it's the first roll of the game and it's a doozy, I will let you be assisted by two entities. Um, so it could either be Dr. Quiff, Lieutenant Krim, or Lieutenant Krim mm -hmm. and the ship. Um, uh, he, nothing against the ship. But so Lisa likes working with people. He'll work with <laughs> Krim and Quith. Okay. Uh, so if people want to pick up Krim and Quith. Yep, and I got I'm, Krim. And this is... I'll get Quith. Okay. And we do not have activations for these two. Uh, yeah, This correct. is the first time they're actually being activated. So no. Okay, cool, cool. Um, okay. And what is the... Uh, task for this in uh, terms of the attribute and discipline? Uh, so what we're trying to figure out right now is the best way to proceed. So stuff like exobiology or um, uh, exploratory surgery or diagnostics, uh, something along mm -hmm. those lines to figure out how best to proceed. Quith has diagnosis as a focus. Is it controlled medicine? Uh, this would be either control medicine or insight medicine. Okay. And by... I'm probably... And I'd are probably we... go control medicine with for Lisa. Uh, and so... would xenobiology work? Uh, oh yeah, xeno, not exo. Xenobiology, yes. Considering that they're okay. half man, half giant scorpion creature, yes, this is definitely falls into xeno <laughs> category. Nice. Right. Quith is locked and loaded. Alright, um, I'll go... You know what? This is probably... I mean, even though it's the first roll of the game... Feels like a good time uh, to pop determination here. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. Don't um, uh, treat anyone, even though those who wish you harm. Uh, yeah, that works well. Yeah. Here. <laughs> All right, so that's two automatic successes, and I have focused. So yeah. Okay, that is oh, four successes from. <laughs> from uh, okay. Dr. Feliza. We have a complication Here, from Quith at a... Here's the thing with my complication. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to activate uh, my Denobulan talent of parent figure. Okay. Yes! So whenever I'm assisted on a task, or I'm just attempting a task, mm -hmm. uh, the first complication created by either me or someone assisting me can be ignored. Oh, yep. yep. Okay. That's a shame. I mean, but we and we got six successes. Yep, so we got a momentum six out of successes, there. five momentum, or one momentum. Sorry. Um, so feel free to please roll me seven challenge dice, Doctor. Yep. Uh, do you mind if we use that momentum to shave off some resistance? Go for Piece it. Some resistance. Do right. it. Resistance. Seven challenge dice. Let's Ooh, go. Let's. So that nice. is five. Uh, which is a breakthrough, and because I have Surgery Savant, I have the Triumphant Effect, so that's two breakthroughs. Oh, Ooh. interesting. <laughs> okay, so let me just do quick math here, so we're down to that. This would 
So that lowers that significantly. And so we're down to that. <coughs> so, uh, Dr. Uh, for Lisa, the, this is your first time working on a half mammalian, half insectoid uh, anthropod creature. I think that's the term arachnids are, either way. Um, there are any anthropod, yeah. yeah. But anyone watching from the, um, you know, the viewing gallery would not know it for, um, would not know it for a thing because your hands are stable, your eyes are keen, and everyone is just watching your uh, Denobulan mind work in playing a connect the medical dots. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, these things are weird. Uh, their mammalian spine stops as it fuses into the uh, the scorpion part. All the spinal yes. cords and all the nerves begin to diffuse throughout the body itself. And that seems to be where the problem is. Uh, all these gas, all the crap that this thing's inhaled is significantly limiting the effectiveness of these cords. Uh, so they are going to have to be either rebuilt, cleaned, uh, uh, yeah, rebuilt, cleaned, or something along those lines. Uh, think of it as trying as like a series of rusted power cables, right? That just okay. aren't working as well anymore. So that's where we're at here. But enough of that scene. As on the bridge, you are informed that you are reaching the staging point. Of Zuberliv. Uh, Zuberliv is a neighboring star system to Arkenfall, the Scorpi homeworld, and this appears to be, or the information that you have received on Zuberliv, uh, tells you that this is their primary primary source of shipbuilding. Um, no habitable no habitable planets, but a couple Class L moons, which are barely habitable, even even less barely habitable by Scorpi, given their additional oxygen requirements. Um, but they are so rich in metal and other raw resources that they really can't afford not to have a... Um, or really can't afford to have anything here. Uh, your sensors indicate a, long, a series of web, uh, web structures that are quickly deduced to be... Uh, sh Ah, shipyards and huge bulk freighters moving in between systems. Uh, they seem to be passing, or they seem to be taking a long, slow routes back to Arkenfall, the Scorpi homeworld. Their solar sails dwarf the USS Concordia by several orders. Their ion engines pumping so much into it that even passing a hundred thousand kilometers in front of the Concordia, your sensors are heavily dampened by the extraneous particles being thrown out, being thrown around by them. But the most interesting thing is the several uh, far, far smaller ships waiting in orbit around the third moon. Uh, this appears to be the gathering that has been uh, that has been mentioned. And in, because I have a lot planned, I'm just, sorry, I'm just going to have to cut straight to our first, straight to our next scene, which is the, cra the interior of the Scorpi vessel. And we are going to start off with, I believe it was going to be Captain Bashir. Nope. Characters. Bashir. We have and Captain Bashir, Ensign Moore, and lacking any Scorpi uh, contingent on the ship, you are accompanied by uh, Crewman Voidrunner for your security escort. Uh, Voidrunner is a Draven representative. The three of you beam on. The three of you beam on board this vessel. Your first thought is, "Wow, it stinks." Uh, your second thought is. There's very little in the way of inertial dampeners. And your th your th your next thought, uh, because I've lost count of how many initial thoughts yeah. you've had. Three. Yep, three. <laughs> um, is there is very little in the way of comforts here. Uh, this this is um, bare this is barely the size of a bachelor's 
a bachelor suite. Uh, so probably about 800, 900 uh, square feet. There are t there's no ch proper chairs because the Scorpi have no, you know, they don't need chairs. They have low uh, platforms for them to rest their arachn their anthropodic bodies on. And the there are hammocks in one side where they presumably sleep. Uh, you notice that they are wearing void suits although they're currently uh, helmetless. Uh, Scorpi void suits are ungainly, uh, horrendously uh, uh, clumsy, and instead of having um, separate, uh, instead of having uh, separate uh, legs for each of their uh, eight appendages, they are grouped into pairs. So inst instead of eight separate legs, there are four legs, and they have to coordinate the movement of their, of two legs, uh, at once. Th that doesn't seem to be hindering these people, though. They come forth and greet you really quickly. Uh, and yes, I, uh, they do definitely look very similar to this. Uh, the Greetings. Male, yeah. <laughs> the male comes forward. Uh, he is just waiting for the GM to come up with, open up his character description. Uh, he's uh, He stands approximately uh, five foot tall. Uh, he has an orange carabase, and you notice that the uh, stinger, which is currently exposed, uh, has been replaced with something very akin to a Swiss Army multi-tool. Captain, Captain, welcome, welcome. He grins. Uh, he skitters up close to you and extends a one of his large pincer arms in greetings. I will shake his pincer arm. <laughs> <laughs> Carefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you take it, you real. Uh, it's currently gloved up, but as you take it in your two hands, you realize that it's actually an augmetic. Uh, oh. Astroneer. Astroneer. This is Ensign Moore and my uh, security, uh, Mr. Voidrunner. Ah, yes. I am Astroneer Cavern. Welcome to the ship. Cavern's Folly. This is my lovely wife, uh, engineer, and weapons expert, Anna. And he points to uh, Anna, who is holding the most complicated set of goggles you've ever seen. Uh, her her uh, carapace is uh, a sickly green color, and weirdly enough, uh, her stinger has been replaced with an old-fashioned gaslight. With nice. a flame and everything. <laughs> Charmed. I got to her. <laughs> Charm, ma'am. Yes, yes, Gunther, so <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. Welcome aboard. Now, if you don't mind, I do need to figure out why our why our engine at the two o'clock position keeps deciding that it's time to fire. And she. Huh. And as you take a few steps in greeting, you realize that the, there is no graph. There is very little gravity on this ship. Uh, oh. Okay. We uh, have space suits, right? Yeah. Yes, that okay. would have been part of your requirement was I to bring assume. on board uh, space suits. Yeah, when is you there... mentioned they had them, I was kind of assuming we would. <laughs> is there enough metal for grav boots? Yes, uh, there is, yes. In fact, they are quite interested in your grav boot technology uh, as soon as you begin walking on walls. I'm going to follow the wife and go have you checked the wiring let me hit go help you <laughs> and scurry off with her. she bats uh she bats you aside and now now you were brought on board as observers when you need when i require your assistance i will ask for it how can i observe if i'm standing over yeah. there i want to observe up close yeah just you're just gonna have to leave him be this just uh how the scorpi are hmm. is there anything we can do Ah, yes. Uh, he points to a uh, sealed door that is classic uh, iron archway with a uh, large um, curve, large twisted handle that you have to uh, twist to open, twist to close. Behind there are several um, gravatic mines. If you wouldn't mind ensuring that they are all prop, all safely in the disarmed state, and then per, and then load up several in the rear launch tubes. Also, whichever one of you feels most comfortable manning a harpoon, 
please familiarize with yourself with that system. I under I, he pauses. Actually, two of you may have to do that because it kind of needs three limbs. Uh, okay. I'll go work on the mines. You two work on the harpoon. <laughs> Aye, sir. Gun. As soon as like Ashenir Cavern said, like harpoon gun. Gunther's mm-hmm. eyes just light up, <laughs> and like, yeah, yeah, I can work on the hard poop gun. Uh, 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 science nerd, let's go find it. <laughs> it's not I hard. know how to defend myself. I'm not that. I am a science nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my point. You're wearing blue. Let's go. Yeah. You even wearing a color? <laughs> Uh, yeah, our, our spacesuits are matched to color, uniform colors, you know. <laughs> We're yeah. stylish. We got a color board, mate. You yeah. know. <laughs> Look, if, the US, if they can afford to paint the uh, California class in uh, d- division colors, they can do the same with spacesuits. So, um, the harpoon gun is not hard to find. It is literally in a small alcove. Um, it is disturbingly cold here. Uh, because the only thing protecting you from void space is, by a quick tricorder scan, roughly two inches worth of transparent aluminum. Ow. Um, yeah, but the harpoon gun is very similar to that of the Millennium's Falcon quad gun. Uh, it has a fairly... It is located at the rear of the ship. Uh, has approximately 180 degrees of... Uh, three... Of... Yeah, of motion on the X and Y axes. So you have good coverage with it. And... Uh, is there is there extra harpoons, or do we just have the one? Uh, there are several. Uh, you can okay, see that cool. there, are, there are several harpoons that are loaded up, and they're all apparently hard wire, hard lined into a, a, ge- a power generator. Oh, Wait, so just for my frame of reference and my mind's eye, is it almost like a, this might be an inaccurate, just almost like a magazine that's filled with harpoons that's like linked to this thing, almost? More or less. Uh, okay. Uh, basically, uh, it's breech loaded, similar to a cannon or a artillery piece. So you slide oh, in the harpoon, okay. you close it down, uh, you fire it, then it's... Oh, okay, got it. And then it's uh, launched that. Then you basically launch it as far as the tether will go and pray that it hits something, and then the tether will connect and will send a massive jolt of electricity through it. Ooh, so it's a harpoon taser. I'm yep. in. Yep. <laughs> Master near Cavern's going, yep, that's how we gotta hunt these beasties. We're, we're going after Kythus. Those don't, they don't mess around. Like, so, weird question. Uh, Draven, we just have, you know phaser technology and all that stuff. Uh, how many of these things kind of tapping one of the harpoons, how many does it usually take to, you know, like, bring one of those things down? Uh, Kythus? Uh, probably about ten. That's why there's a lot of us, after all. We have to get all... We have to get in, get out, and some of them will... Some of us will run interference, but not us. No, we're going for the Kythus. Gunther just sort of nods. He's like, "All right, yeah, yeah. We may not have some of that fancy energy weapons that you, uh, fe- that you Starfleet types have, or the you Draven, but dang nation, we get along just fine. Good, uh, good. What do you hunt these things for? Well, in the olden days, we hunt them for a lot of things. Uh, they're, uh, they're." Ah, their teeth made great. Ah, their teeth were fantastic for forging into uh, weapons or any sort of a structural integrity thing. Their hide was tough, made, and their hair made great for clothing. Uh, Kythus capes were ju- all the rage about fifty years back, but since we haven't, ha- but since our, uh, nope, my GM's lost train of thought. <clears throat> right, but <laughs> since our civilization has jump forward a bit, and we don't have to worry about these Borg anymore, well, our, we've become a little more self-reliant. We don't have to hunt these things anymore. But with our home world not doing so well on the food front, well, we're hunting them for meat. Well, you figure one of these Kythuses could feed at least half the planet for at least a winter. We're hoping to get two of them. 
I heard they're, uh, I'm trying, out of character, these things are basically giant space whales, correct? Uh, the way he's describing them are more like giant, like, space, uh, yeah, space eel, space whale, some weird combination between the two of them. Oh, cool. They're long, slender okay. things, yep. I like that description. Yeah. Yeah. Have to keep off. Yeah, we have to go for the full adults. Yeah. The pups are too well armored. And the mean bastards, too. Nope. Gotta go after the adults. Once they enter their pupil form, come out as full adults, they lose most of their armor. Easier to hunt that way. Huh. I think with most uh, evolutionary ladders of species, you think it'd be the other way around. Not this most environment. are. Most are, yeah. Not in this environment. Nope. Pups have to protect themselves from the radiation of the beacon star. Once they've. Uh, absorbed enough radiation to fully mature, they enter a pupa form. Once they finish the pupa, their grown adult face doesn't need to as uh, much protection against the radiation. Built the pro built but built to better process it, you know. Got it. And Gunther sort of leans over to more. By by beacon star, he means a sun, right? I'm assuming. Okay. Uh, you hear a series of clangs followed by um, spraying of things as you look up and Astroneer Anna is uh, floating upside down with a large can of aerosol foam oh, uh, spraying down a seal of one of the bulkheads. Yep, yeah, we'll survive. You can send, signal the signal the Huntmaster that, that uh, Caverns Folly is ready to fly, my dear. And without a word, he will skitter over and signal the hunt. Or signal that they're ready for the hunt, anyways. Captain Bashir, you wander into the back room where they indicate the mines. <laughs> um, there are approximately 40... Um, there are pro uh, there's about 40 of them. There's... Not so much stacked as stuffed, and uh, they're they look roughly the size, roughly the shape of a football, and about the size of probably an overinflated, uh, probably a well twice the size of a regular football. I could inf I could insert an NFL pun here, but I'm not going to. Um, the they are all currently blinking yellow. Uh, except for one, which is not blinking at all. I'll scan it. All well, right. I'll, I'll scan the whole room to make sure that's what's normal <laughs> compared to like the, see which one is the the. I'm assuming the one that's not blinking is good or bad, yeah. but the ones that are blinking are good. Quite so, probable. Uh, roll me an I, insight plus security roll, please. Uh, this will be difficulty zero, so just a chance for some momentum. Because, holy cow, you might need it. I mean... <clears throat> I mean... Uh. <laughs> Nothing. This right. is involves... Oh, hey, two, two successes. Momentum. All right, Captain. So that's two momentum. Nice work. So the one that is not blinking is obviously the odd one out. And as you begin to uh, folk, uh, take a closer scan at, with your tricorder, uh, you realize that one of its fuses has apparently become uh, disconnected. It's not okay. any, any danger of going live, but it just needs to be re, re, uh, reattached to the switch. Um, okay, how, how hard is that one to pull out of the stack <laughs> without it's... causing a giant... <laughs> <laughs> it's near the bottom, or... Uh, yeah, it's near the bottom, but it's not oh. too difficult. There, once you, because of low gravity, you realize that once you toss, you know, move some aside, they're kind of stable. Can we not say toss right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, yes, okay. Easy enough I'll, to uh... move aside. Easy enough to uh, right. reconnect. And once you uh, reconnect the fuse to the uh, triggering device. It begins blinking yellow. <laughs> uh, so, 
a decent amount of time will pass. So let's go back to the USS Concordia and its bridge. Where Commander Hadrix, you're sort of just cloaking away on the bridge. Is there anything that you got, would like to do on the bridge? Uh, you will notice a couple new NPCs. We have Operations slash Communications Officer, Lieutenant Junior Grade Nix, and Chief of Security, Lieutenant Finnell. Why is Lagos lopsided? Uh, because <laughs> that's his orientation to the console, apparently. I would, pr I would probably, if anything, want to, you know, just talk to everybody and just kind of get their feelings on how things are going. All right. All right. Okay, Hadrix, everyone is reporting that stations are normal, apparently. Uh, and our Lieutenant Commander Mo Moose, anything you'd like to do in engineering? Yeah, just puts it around, doing little repairs, upkeep, right. maintenance. Fair enough. After a brief period of time, oh, it, se it seems longer than it is because this is your first time in the center chair after the captain's gone. Uh, your Lieutenant Nix reports from communications that every that the fleet is beginning to move. They're all deploying sails and their ion engines, and they are giving us a course de and destination. Um. Out of character, does Primrose actually have a rank, or just Primrose? Uh, I'm just... Uh, Primrose is a crewman. Yeah. All the side expanse uh, lies in individuals are crewmen. Oh, yep. Forgot about that. That's all right. Crewman Primrose uh, set a course to... Follow along with the fleet. This garden will do so. And I will input those coordinates and push the button. Okay. So now now for the interesting part. So their destination is a, is a neutron star. Uh, roughly uh, roughly uh, two sectors away. It will take them about a week to get there. It will take you at max warp a, about a day. Do you want to stick with the fleet or head on ahead? I'm going to stick with, have the ship stick with the fleet because I don't want to lose the captain. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. Fair point. Yeah, yeah. Captain might find a few scratch marks on the underside of his armrest when he gets back. <laughs> Let's see. And ooh. This is another activation for Primrose. I need to figure out what I want to do with her. Give me just a second. Okay. Multiple uh, arms. <laughs> uh, while Primrose uh, delves into her self-improvement. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, sorry, was that something from the captain? No, captain was just laughing. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we have basically a week at... Speeds that would make the original SS Enterprise go do WTF, but. <laughs> <laughs> Not incorrect. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Captain Archer is just watching somewhere going tap, tap, tap. Come on, people. <laughs> uh, the scene is quite different on board many of the uh, Scorpi craft as there are. It is not a smooth ride, Captain, or Ensign, or Void Runner. <laughs> uh, the Scorpi seem to be perfectly okay with this. No, I suppose that the fact that the the ride isn't smooth is sort of negated by the fact that there's very little in the way of gravity actually keeping you to the bumpy hull. Um, so, despite the fact that things are shaking all over the place, as long as you're holding on to something, it's not bad. Um, the center console, now that the ship is in flight, has lit up with uh, small indicators indicating where all of the other ships are. And Astroneer Cavern takes great pride in showing you where the USS Concordia is in relation to everything. And then goes into a long storied history about how he is related to at least six of these other captains. Oh, beautiful. Ah. Uh. Astroneer Anna has 
looks at you and just wonders how you're going to sleep. She's only brought a couple hammocks and figure that was enough for your bipedal people. Well, we'll do what we have to do. <laughs> eh, we'll make it work somehow. Right. Yeah. Your, your first night is spent very weirdly. Uh, you realize that they sleep in low gravity by scuttling over to a half-length bed, um, plopping their uh, anthropotic halves on a cushion of sorts, and then literally belting themselves to the upper half so that their, bo their upper half li uh, lies supine on a bed and pillow. Also prevents oh. them from falling away. For, you know, from drifting away in zero G. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm. We're roughly tied into hammocks. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. All right. Yeah. And that's how they sleep. Uh, so, uh, does any does anyone have anything that they wish to do during this week? Um. Make sure. I that guess. Oh, yeah. More more surgery, I suppose. That's a good. Thing. Yeah. Surgery. More. Yes. Okay. Surgery. <laughs> Uh, for us, I learned more about the Scorpio personality, and like I said, I'm, honestly, I'm just here for the experience. So, I mean, for us, honestly, whatever they need to be done, anything that we can help, honestly, listening to them and talking to them, sharing stories, stuff like that, um, uh, pretty much, like I said, anything they need, we're here to help. Cool. <laughs> from yeah. our side. Okay. Uh, speaking of here to help, uh, that's the shuttle bay. Let's go to sick bay. There we Wrong go. Bay. <laughs> and let's do another series of tests. And this time you can only be assisted by yes, one that's... entity for Lisa, either Krim, Quiff, or the ship. And this is going to be... Uh, so oh, sorry, go ahead. 15 minus 5 is not 15. Isn't it? Uh, no, It'd it's be not. 13. Nope, never mind. <laughs> um, let's redo that then, shall we? Uh, let's do... I just, I just realized that one. Oh... <laughs> Yeah, GM math. Um, so uh, this is your first attempt at a treatment, typically used on uh, humanoid stuff. You are pretty sure that because the internal merging points, per, for lack of a better phrase, are at least humanoid for the most part, mm -hmm. typical humanoid medicine is a good place to start. So, like, I guess, like, from what you're telling me, so, like, all the more vital organs are in like the humanoid not humanoid but like the human half whereas a lot of like the nerves and such are more in like the scorpion esque part of it uh so the the scorpion have uh they have a yeah so the scorpion on the humanoid half ha are pretty much humanoid so they have digestive tract heart lungs brain it's spinal cord etc uh, the the scorpion half is missing a lot of typical anthropotic organs, and appears okay. but appears to be primarily or bah, but the organs that do exist act in tandem with those or act as an extension of those in the upper half. So the digestive tract will carry on down into this portion of the body, and dealing with you know waste recycling etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, there is a I guess a pump station is probably the best word for it to to uh, keep blood blood circulating in the lower half. Um, hmm. the, uh, there's no uh, obvious lungs, um, but that I believe is because uh, anthropods will inhale air through their skin. Uh, so there's <laughs> air. Now that is potentially incorrect. I'm not 100% certain on that. I found very conflicting information. But let's let's uh, same same focuses as the first task would uh, apply here. If you have uh, exobiology or experimental medicine, some okay. those would work a little bit better because now you're actually yeah. into the treatment phase. Okay. Um, in that case, let me look here. And I'm just looking at about uh, Krim and Quetz to see which one I. Yeah. Um. Since uh, Krim has that biology focus, let's go with Krim assisting me. Okay. You got that it. Quiff decided to complication last time, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
And I should mention that because of uh, if Krim has biology, that does not apply. Um, oh, it's like xenobiology. Oh, if she has xenobiology, then yes, that will apply. Xenobiology and internal medicine. Okay, both of those work. Let's see, and still control medicine. Uh, yeah, control medicine. And, oh, damn. Okay. Nothing um, I shall. I shall take a momentum for a third die. Okay. That was quite nearly a crit fail. <laughs> hey, there's the successes you need. That's the see, actually, let me look at my talents because you might act. Crim might actually be able to reroll that zero. Does your Denobulan thing work every time or just once mm -hmm. per? Um, my parent figure thing is doesn't say that it's uh, limited to anything, but this is a different talent I'm okay. looking at. Um, Chief of Staff. Uh, when using the medicine discipline to provide assistance to another character attempting a medicine task, all characters that are providing assistance may re-roll a d20 in their dice pool. Oh, nice. So uh, feel free to re-roll there, Krim. All right. Let's see how she helps. Yes, hey, right. we got the momentum right back. Nice. Would you like that momentum to shave off two resistance? Of course, sir. Okay. Uh, seven challenge dice, please. Yep. Yeah. Let's go. Nice. <laughs> so that's um. Oh. So that's another seven work. Mm -hmm. Uh, surgery savant. So I have two breakthroughs. Cool. Cool. And a partridge in a pear tree. In a pear tree. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so if I have my math right, that's what we're looking at for the next task. Uh, so Huzzah. you are seeing some signif some um, or initial. Nah, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Um, initial prognosis looks good. Uh, it's working well with his immune system. Uh, the couple modifications you've had to make to deal with the anthropotic nature is working out okay, and you're taking a significant amount of learning from. Uh, doctor, oh darn, the one where Worf got in a fight with a barrel and lost. Uh, that doctor who basically helped redo his spine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, that doctor's I don't medicine. remember her name, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, that doctor's medicine is proving very instrumental here. Huh. But yeah, um, turns out when Worf fights a barrel and loses, this guy wins. But, yeah. Oh. Interesting, because... Uh, this... <laughs> Since Verlise is having a somewhat easy time with this, kind of talking back and forth with Krim, it's like, you know, most of her work referencing that doctor seems quite unethical is the right word to use, but uh, it's interesting to see that it's actually helping us quite a bit in this scenario. Well, it could always be worse. It could. Um, you said that, why? <laughs> <laughs> I, because she's a Bajoran and she <laughs> lives with danger. That, that had better become one of her focuses. Oh, or her values. <laughs> lives with danger. Oh, boy. Yeah. Because she's Bajoran. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. I'd like That's to live funny. dangerously. That'll be her first value. <laughs> you know. Oh, y'all are great. Okay. I did have one quick question, kind of off of character. Sure. Um, did we not find out that, like, the Scorpi were not this way? Like, at one point, they were another one of, like, the... They were genetically altered oh, in, yes. like, at some point in their history to become these Scorpion-like creatures? Yes. Uh, they are very... Their history makes it publicly known <laughs> that... The Scorpi, at some point, are a genetic, were the result of genetic manipulation, and the preservers decided to save them. Uh, so they don't know who made them, or why. All they know is that the preservers rescued them from whatever plight they were in, and gave them a chance to actually build a proper society. Well, a society, whether it's proper or not, is always a... <laughs> yeah, true. Well, you know, anything... I couldn't remember... Yeah. Go on. 
I was like, I couldn't remember if that was something I just thought that was what happened or that was really a thing. No, that's that's their history and they're proud of it. They're proud that they were saved and are going to make the best that they can do with their life. Okay. Um, anyone have anything else that they'd wish to do while en route? Um... I'm not hearing volunteers. No. So, okay. I, yeah. Well, we are going to come to the pulse. Oui. We. So, uh, farther. So you're now two sectors roughly outside of the Lasai expanse, and this is the scene that greets you from the window of every ship that has that depart or that yeah, that arrives and drops out of warp. They all the. Sh all the Scorpio craft refurl their sails, some of which appear to be quite tattered. And where's the USS Concordia? It's a token somewhere. I'll find it. There it is. There we go. I can GM. There we go. <clears throat> um. The sensors on board the Scorpi vessel are obviously very primitive and not as advanced as you'd like them to have been more, but even you're able to identify that this is a neutron star. And judging from its uh, axial tilt, thankfully one that appears to be, that uh, spins and ejects in a very limited arc. Uh, so you guys are thankfully not in much danger unless you decide to try to risk one of the star poles. The uh, you are able to determine that there is a significant amount of radiation inside the orbiting gas cloud, which is extremely dense and blocks much of the way of sensors. I'd like to uh, contact the uh, Concordia <laughs> and basically ask them to um, just get... Uh, some readings and stuff why we're out here because uh, obviously this is kind of a neat phenomenon and would like some uh, data <laughs> more you can hear more in the background in that com uh, in that get this and this and this and this. <laughs> <laughs> he's an astro astrometrics freak he's of course going to be going i need all this information now sure well, there's a couple support science officers on board if you want one of them to run some scans. I don't... Um, Let me see here. Yeah, you could always have Togi do it. Yeah. Togi, well, and Dresden can do it too because he has astrophysics. That's true. So, yeah, we'll put them on it just to do, like, background roles for collecting information. Okay. Yeah, I should also mention that this is a new scene, so you lose one momentum. So let's get some more momentum, shall we? Okay, so uh, insight plus science from Dresden, and the ship will assist with sensor science. And this is going to be a difficulty of one. Insight science. I'm assuming and I'd say, focus. yeah, astrophysics would work for a focus. Uh, yes, it would. Okay. I'll take it. Two successes. Fantastic. And who's got the ship? Uh, I can get the ship. I mean, it's like I made support characters that had useful skills. Uh, sensor science. Yep, sensor science. What are you trying to say, lad? Like, we're not useful. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that. Uh, eh, eh. Very well. Uh, you get the two successes you need. Um, so you get, um, because there's no chief science officer on board, you don't get the free question, but you do get one momentum from the ship's sensors, which could be spent to ask a question. Uh, wait, let me actually give you the information first, shall I? I think that would be for the best. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, uh, the neutron star by your, da by your dating is apparently a fairly old one. It's been around for uh, several million years and certainly doesn't look like it's going to die out anytime soon. The 
uh, accretion of or the accretion disk of gases is extremely radioactive and stretches for roughly uh, roughly the orbit uh, roughly the orbit of Jupiter in distance. Uh, naturally, the closer you get to the star, the clo the more dense the radiation gets. You're also detecting several uh, life signs inside the uh, radiation clouds of un unknown uh, cosmozoan species. There appear to be at least 50 of them by your sensor's estimate, although that number could increase as the, they get closer to the star, or maybe not. Your sensors get far less effective as it gets that close. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is a fairly narrow axial tilt of this particular pulsar, so the neutron waves are most likely not going to hit your ship unless you deliberately, you know, fly into them. Let's not do that. Yeah. Mm, is that is that a test? What, flying into the sh Yeah, see, yeah, yeah, it's something like that. No. I mean, if Primrose wants to, I will give you the difficulty and what happens if you fly into him, but... You know... No! 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 <laughs> no. This garden disapproves of this course of action. Uh, all right. Are you threatening me? <laughs> uh, okay, Corn Holio. <laughs> I am now fully engulfed in the corona. <laughs> uh, oh, Lord. We've we've gone there. We've gone there. Anyways, it is both a Star Trek and a timely reference, sadly. Yes, yes indeed. <laughs> so Ensign Dresden goes ahead and um, reports the information to the bridge. Okay. And you get one free question if you want it from the momentum gained from the sensors. I mean, I have the like observation question, but I don't know if it's just the image or is it something to add if it's like going to be a legitimate question okay. of you know there's these like collection of um i keep my ping like there's like the striations yeah are those like planetary bodies that are like what, remnants of planetary bodies uh or no what uh what those are would appear to uh they appear to be i guess i was going to say dust clumps but then again remnants of planetary bodies is probably just as accurate um dense pockets of gases uh non-volatile gases i should say hmm. i guess the question that tadrix might bring up is there anything useful that we could collect that could be used to aid us during our expanse you know exploration hmm well, the Buzzard collectors could be, you know, gather up some of the gases for scientific evidence. Uh, you could try hunting one of these creatures on your own and, you know, slave it to your will somehow. I don't know. Um, but use, in terms of useful resources, not particularly. Okay, okay. Hey, I never said Hadrix was good at science. Yeah. That's why he has people for that. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, the uh, f the hunt marshal uh, hails the Concordia, and well, opens a fleet-wide hailing frequency. Uh, it's a old, gruff Scorpy, uh, long white beard, one eye missing, you know, traditional, uh, you know, mar mar uh, maritime veteran kind of Scorpy. Does he have a hat on? Well, duh. It's a nice tricorn hat. <laughs> yes. Of course he does. <laughs> oh, that's an image. Yeah. Okay, so plan is is for our... For the journeymen, you're going in first. You're going to attempt to seed sectors 4, 5, and 6 with mines. we got to try to separate the pups from the adults. Otherwise, them pups come back mighty mad. After that, the merchants and the uh, gunners will go in and at will and will attempt to slide alongside one of the adults and try to harpoon the bastard. Hopefully, it doesn't put up too much of a fight. And for those who m will not come out of this, we shall remember you. And of course, should our uh, 
high tech friends uh, watching over us ch care to assist in uh, any way they deem fit, that uh, would be greatly appreciated. We thank you for the invitation. Mm. All right. The hunt. The we shall s scout out the Beacon Star. Secure five. Uh, secure the or attempt to find out where they're gathered. That will be de denoted Sector One. Two, three, four, five, six will follow after that. Stand by on this frequency for f for the ghost signal. Skathus out. And with that, the all 50-ish Scorpy vessels disperse into a uh, web-like, or a, a very disperse uh, situation as they begin to pummel the... Sorry. They begin to pummel the neutron star with, or, and its accretion disk with all sorts of um, beam technology. Some of them are launching in mines just to um, attempt to provoke or herd whatever they think is in there. And you ca uh, visually, you, ca you catch a occasional glimpse of something long and snake-like surfacing briefly before diving back into the gas clouds. But eventually... Captain, where do you want us? Right. Ah, yes. Okay, uh, you, science geek. Moore. Moore, wasn't it? Oh, sorry, wrong yeah. accent. <clears throat> Moore, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, of course I know your name by now. We've been here for a week. Now, if you could be so kind as to keep your peepers peeled on this here um, auger. We sh if you see any of the gases dispersed less than 100 parts per million, then that means we've got ourselves a surfacer. And keep keep an eye on the sensor return. If it happens to be within a within a uh, AU parameter of 3.5 or less, that means that it is. Or, sorry, if the density is 3 AU or less, then that means that she's a baby or she's a pup. We don't want her. However, if it's greater than five, well, that means that we have ourselves a full-blown adult. I'd be darned if I don't want anyone else getting first uh, first sight on a prey before we do. Understood. I'll keep my eyes peeled. Right. Mm. You there, Mr. Draven. If you could just keep an eye on the harpoon. Just, you know, I'm not expecting anything this far out, but you never know. <clears throat> on it. And you there, Captain. Mine launcher's all ready to go? Ready and willing. Excellent. Uh, uh, normally I have my lovely wife, Anna, there push the uh, release button, but I think that's a good thing for you to be doing. If you could just keep your hand over that big red button over there. And he points to a button that appears that is indeed big, red, and obviously at the level to be hit at with their pincers instead of their hands, because you actually have to crouch down in order to um, be able to push it. But yes, it's there. And when I give the word go, you give. You uh, give her. Yeah, I led that. You lay, you lay as many mines as you can. Hi, Captain. Okay. And this is where we are going to go into um, here. Because we're, what we're, this is basically going to do is... Nope. Wrong. Michael. Uh, there. Ooh. Battle map. Oh. Because this is how we are going to attempt to play a very loose form of Starship Battle Combat, etc. It's Battleship. Yes, Battleship. <laughs> you you sunk my space whale. <laughs> Damn it, you got to it before I did. Damn A30. <laughs> okay, so what we have here are several journeymen operating in loose. Each one of these represents a group of three ships. Uh, they begin to ply the sail... The, or, they begin to ply the gases getting lower and lower into part of into one of the parts of the accretion disk. And finally, you hear uh, the Scathis call out, There she blows! <laughs> really? Yes. Yes, really? really. Why not? It's my game, okay. damn it, I'll do what I want. As, you, as your sensors indicate 
what you must, what everyone seems to believe is a kythus. Uh, kythus has more in common, I guess, with an ichthyosaur than a eel whale, but uh, it's. I mean, an ichthyosaur could be called an eel whale. Yeah, so. it could be. And the, mm, where was my train of thought going? I saw Golden Fez in chat, and then I thought, oh yeah. Huh. Anyways, um, the the eel whale, aka a Kythus, um, immediately begins to swim deeper back towards the nebula. Uh, the group channel indicates that this must not happen. The problem is, is that there's still a few Kythus pups in the area that have to be scared off in order to get to your prize. And this is where we are going to attempt to do a form of um, combat. So pretty much this will, um, yeah, so this will basically play out a starship combat for the most part. Uh, you get number of actions per round. Actions is the scale of your ship. Um, I will be treating the Scorpi vessels acting as basically one per one action will be like for three of them because they're operating in concert. Uh, so uh, USS Concordia, good guys get to go first. Uh, you've been hanging back, letting the Scorpi do most of the work for the moment, but now you've sighted the prize. Well, they have and have let you know where it is. What do you wish to do? Uh, you are currently at long range due to the nature of the um, accretion disk. I am spending a couple points of threat. Actually, because of what that entails is because of the accretion disk and the threat to include a complication. For the rest of this scene, all, uh, uh, all complications or complications will take place uh, 18 to 20 just because of the radiation and all that other stuff. And because I'm making it for the scene, so I'm spending a decent amount of threat for it. So, you know, feel free to give me more if you want. Well. Um, which one are we in? Um, I will say that you guys are in this one. I will mark them as color-coded. Oh, I suppose it would help if I actually did that here. You are red. Green and orange. Okay. Uh, who wishes to go first? Good guys get to go, so uh, someone on the Concordia can do something. Or I could do something for one of the Scorpy crews. What do you want? Hmm. So the youngsters are feisty, but we have to draw them away, right? That's right. They they don't want the young they don't want the small fry. They want the big mama or mama. It's difficult to determine gender in space. Yeah, they could be asexual too. Also possible. Um, can I we say... fly under it to find out? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's an image. Um, I say <laughs> the green group here um, tries to get the attention of this one pull it away okay okay uh, so that's going to they're going to have to get much closer to use their minds so their first action will be a move and be, so they are going to spend a bit going here and I'm just going to call that one. okay so that's their turn done which is green nope this one Okay, other folks' turn. I will have this one. Uh, it, because they're Cosmozoans, they don't move as they don't have these things like you know, impulse engines and whatnot. No, they move on bio biology, so they don't move as fast as you guys do. But it moves in slightly. I should mention that these uh, small ones are scale three, and Big Mama here is scale seven. Oh, she big. She big. Tear. She big. That's why it takes <laughs> a lot of harpoons to bring them down. Next up, 
is one of the good guys. And keep in mind that you have actions such as, you know, uh, scan for weakness or, you know, impulse will legitimately jump you anywhere you want, I suppose. But I um, always have to aim fire weapons. Uh, Commander Hadrix, you're in command of the Concordia. What do you want the Concordia to do? Yes, I am. I am in charge of the Concordia. Um, you know what? I mean, to see... I mean, since we've never encountered them, I'm saying we'll do a, you know, do a weakness scan on Big Mama. Ah, scan for weakness. Okay. I believe that is an insight science test. Um. <clears throat> So, um, insight science, and the ship will assist with sensor science. Now, who am I? Uh, now, who are we going to use to? Am I, am I using Hadrix to roll that? Um, I believe, I believe that would be. Well, I guess Dresden's currently filling in for science officer, so he can roll. Or that's yeah. true. All right, insight science. Are we getting? Xenobot, no, Xenobotany, this won't work. No. No. Oh, hell yeah. Hey, nice, nice. Okay. So that was get... a difficulty of, what was it? Difficulty of one. So that is three, so you get two momentum. But we still need somebody to roll for the ship, though. Yep. Uh, ships, sensors plus security. I have the ship up. Okay. Nothing from the ship, I'm afraid. Okay. So that's it's not been a good night for me rolling. That's okay. The, the night is young. Odds may swing in your favor. Or they may not. Don't know yet. I now feel like we're doing the Hunger Games. <laughs> I was just going to say, may the odds always be in your favor. Okay. We're going to move this guy a bit closer, because there's something going on that he is curious about. Okay, good guys next. Um, may I suggest us on the red try to, since we're the closest, come in and try to um, impulse in? Sure. So uh, we don't have two younglings on three ships here. Right. We're all two yeah. Well, that's uh, significant in numbers of successes. You have moved in successfully. Okay. That was red. So, Big Kythus is going to move. <clears throat> Sensing something amiss, the Kythus is going to do with a giant spurt of some form of purple gas out of its uh, sphincter. It bolts. <laughs> No. It, <laughs> no. 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 It, <laughs> it bolts right into the midst of everyone. And that is its turn. Next up is, I believe, blue or orange have stuff to do. Now, oh every, um, so the, uh, the weapons on the uh, Scorpion ships are close range only. So they have to be within two hexes of a token in order to use them. Well, at least at you know, their standard difficulty levels. So I guess we would just have to have the blue and orange move in closer, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Okay. So, blue moves in. Or orange moves in, I should say. So that's that one. And I believe we have one Kythus pup left to do something. And this pup... I 
and is not is going to attempt to ram uh, green group but it doesn't do all that well uh, green group sees it and performs evasive maneuvers just in time he a puppy is not coordinated hey that's you know their first time you know trying to deal with scorpy people uh, let's see so i believe all that's left from the good guys is blue can blue intercept the one that's coming in or at least head that way. So blue goes this way? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's roll. Nope. <laughs> okay. Uh, it manages to make it here uh, before one of their... En uh, before the gas interferes with one of their um, engine arrays and causes a mild panic before that group has to stop and reassess itself but that was that and now now everyone I believe is gone so now it is my turn this pup this pup is going to come in amongst the red guys uh, so um, Caverin shouts out a word of warning as one of the pups begins to jump towards you And that is enough successes that it is going to impact the Scorpy ship. Now, will it impact you? Let's see. 1d3. If it's a 1, it's you. If it's not, it's not. Oops. Roll. It's not you. Congratulations. You you jink out of the way quick enough. Um, I should mention that, me, that these uh, Scorpy vessels have a, a ring of impulse engines so that they can literally move in any direction in 360 degree space instead of you know having to move only forward you duck out of the way in time thanks to Caverin's excellent maneuverability the ship next to you suffers a significant hit uh, you can see them breaching atmosphere uh, from here Caverin swears and Anna just clicks her tongue a couple times Now it's good guy's turn. Should I what? drop the mines to hurt baby? Uh, I mean, if you wanna, if you we can just, yeah. we can Does just do the baby. Have any other I mean, if we drop the mines, then we basically take the baby out of the equation, right? Yeah. Nuke the baby. Just nuke, nuke the, the baby. baby. Not awesome. nuke the baby. I mean, I, I feel like they're they're getting enough nuclear radiation from the pulse bar. I don't think the explosion is going to do that. N nuke the baby. <laughs> <laughs> nuke the baby. Nuke the baby. It's, they call. Ah, they're not so. Ah, but they're not radiation mines. No, they're they're concussive force. And yeah. uh, by this point, anyone looking at the uh, anyone who's had a few seconds to look at them realizes that they're basically on par, explosive wise, with uh, Enterprise era photonic torpedoes. Oh, fun! Yeah. And I'm gonna shoot them out the airlock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if that's what you want your action to do, um... sure. Okay. <laughs> So, let's see how she rolls. 20. Oh. Well. Oh. Oh. And oh, the dear. will attempt to assist. Oh. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, it's not good when the GM says, oh, dear. That's two complications. Oh, dear. Okay. Well, this will be fun. So, uh, Captain. Yeah. Uh, as you begin to un unload the torpedo or the uh, mines, you hit the eject button, and there is a whirring and a sputtering. There's a chunk, chunk, and you're hearing ominous sounds of beeping coming from the <laughs> tubes. All right. Uh, 
Anna go Anna lets out some colorful words that are not translated by your universal translator. Uh, Scotty, your but, character, uh, you would indi we'll <laughs> would indicatively know them as Scorpy curse words. I'll just look at him. And go. There are still children around, and point to myself. <laughs> <laughs> But I'll say it in their native tongue to, for them to realize that I know what they're saying. Uh, she... All right, I'm going to head back. I am going to immediately, like, take a movement roll and head back to the compartment. Mm. Uh -huh. So, already there's uh, blaring sirens that are on top of all the other sirens going off. And uh, Caverin's looking around, quite panicked. Uh, he looks to uh, the three of you goes, Tube's jammed. We gotta go. Who wants to go out and clear it? I'm going. Good. Put your suit on, blue person. And uh, take one. Take this with you. He passes you something that does that bears a surprising resemblance to a crowbar on one end and a plunger on the other. <laughs> Wait. Right, take the airlock. As, as, I, as I'm heading towards the airlock, running out to go do this, I'm looking at this with the humming that's steamed to Mario. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, uh, that's Red Team's turn. So that's that. Um, as soon as I figure out which one they were, I will mark them as completed. Nope, this one. Okay, bad guy's turn. Well, this one's going to move in a bit closer. Uh, good guy's turn. I'm not hearing anyone wanting to do anything. So are we just going to skip? I, I... <laughs> No, 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 I, I know what Thank I want you. to do, but... <laughs> yeah, it's not your turn anymore, I'm afraid. Right. I know! <laughs> um, green on <laughs> air mines. Okay. So, for for frame of reference, which of these... Uh, which color dot is the one that's, like, the Captain Moore and... Red. Red. Red, Red for it. command. Captain Moore. That's that's not yet. <laughs> Give it the next round. Give it a couple... Next round, and then maybe he'll be Captain Moore. <laughs> I, I'm already I, I'm uh, already Doctor Moore. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! Okay, uh, what do you want? Um, I I say the green let off their um, minds to uh, okay. either distract or keep the kitties at bay. Okay, they are successful. Uh, they deploy the mines, and I will roll some challenge dice. Dice be here. Not the greatest amount of damage, but it's enough for them to uh, cause a bit of a stir. Okay, green has gone. Uh, nope, that's the pup. There's the green guys. <coughs> <clears throat> but it's not enough to uh, dissuade the pup as it decides to charge again. And Failing it, miserably. It fails miserably. So these are apparently the elite of the elite, um, <laughs> Scorpy. <laughs> they've, they've done this before. They know what they're up against. Okay. Some old codger with his cane. Oh, you damn kids, stay off my lawn! I've never actually thought of how uh, Scorpio do peg legs until this moment, but I'm sure it's amusing. Okay, next up is um, one of the good guy, or no, one of me. No, nope, nope, never mind. I got distracted. One of you guys. So Concordia, orange or blue, I believe. I would say since Concordia is seeing them kind of taking taking a circling action. And we kind of have detected something with the big mom, mamma jamma. Um, we'll kind of take a position between blue and orange to kind of get closer. Okay. 
Uh, so roll me an impulse check, please. This should generate you some momentum. I believe that is Primrose doing a control plus con. And I just minimized the wrong window. Let me bring back the overlay. Um, let's do that there. And this is what I wanted. Okay. Uh, helm operations. <clears throat> so this is a control plus con task. And the ship will assist with engines plus con. All right. Um, let's see. I gave Primrose the precision maneuvering talent with her uh, improvement. Would that apply here? Uh, what does that do? Um, so basically, if this is a task that requires precise maneuvering or where there is a collision risk, it reduces the difficulty of the task by one. Well, considering the difficulty is already zero, um, I will say that this will negate the potential complication range of 18 to 20. Okay. Ah. Also, McCall, there's n no image on the stream. Discord, oh, yeah. Good lord. Um, sorry, folks. I brought that up. Why is that not working? Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. Uh, yeah, minimize. Those were the mines. Yeah. <laughs> minimize. <laughs> Popular. So... Part of it's oh. showing up now. The other half isn't. Oh, you They this, were darkness mines. Is... I see the rolls. Yeah. I see no map. <laughs> I don't get what happened here. I don't want to stop and restart, but I think I'm going to have to. Sorry, folks. Be right back. Think... Please be back. Reloading everything here. Haha, -ha, we'd be back. Yay. Okay. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, <laughs> there we go okay so we are back and I believe that we managed to get one momentum from Pr Primrose's action we did okay uh, ship needs to assist with engines plus con please was our bio break for the captain crapping himself <laughs> <laughs> Engines con, you said? Yeah, engines con. Engines science. That's con. <laughs> hey! Okay. One one more momentum. Fantastic. Nice. We're at five. Okay, so move the ship wherever you want it to move. Ooh, decision making. Okay. About there. Good place for it. Okay, so next turn, so USS Concordia has now moved. God, you're actually making me actually use roll 20, what the hell? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the orange, oh no, the bad guys get to go. Uh, who's left to go? Oh, the big Kythus. So, yeah, guess who's closest? Uh, so, uh, Captain Bashir, as you are beginning to exit the airlock, you can't help but notice a giant maw of teeth. Uh, your first thought is, wow, that looks a lot like our st like uh, Andoria's star. The second is, Andoria's star does not have teeth around it. Um, as it begins a... as it tries to grab one of you for dinner. I, Not with that I'm complication. Stand, I'm, I'm standing on the hall with my plunger. <laughs> Come at me! <laughs> and the get off my lawn memes can now go into the discard chat. Uh-huh. Yeah, so a um, bad... Sp uh, it... Er, blah. Yeah, it complicates itself, so... Yeah, it attempts to snap at you. It doesn't have a tongue, but somehow manages to accidentally bite one of its maw. And you can't help but see uh, speckles of some vic some uh, reflective black goop en emanating from uh, deep down its gullet. Okay. Yeah. So that's its complication. That's that. It bit its own tongue. Basically, yeah. Sweet. Okay. Uh, Orange is going to attempt to latch on with its um, harpoons. Uh, 
Not with that roll, it's not. Nope. Uh, they bounce hard. The first uh, array, or the first... That, the first series of harpoons uh, launches from the aft of three scorpy vessels, but doesn't get purchase on its uh, thick hide. It's the wrong so, angle. It just... Yep. Ding, ding, ding. Yep, wrong angle for the dangle. Next up is... I believe all that's left is the blue guys. What do you want blue to do? Weren't they having engine problems or something? No, they just didn't go as far as they wanted to. That was their oh, complication. Okay. okay. Yep. Well, they, they were heading to intercept that baby. Yep. Want them to do it again? Please. Um, well, there, there's now oh. a mother in between it and the baby. Yeah. Yeah. No. It can still go. <laughs> it can still go. Don't matter to me. It can yeah. still go. It's not like it provokes an attack of opportunity as it passes through. This isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, that's enough for it to move. So it will jump over here. Okay. I believe that is everyone's turn. Uh, next. Or that's everyone's uh, next round. Next up is the good guys. So, all right. So we're at the beginning. Uh, nope. You're, this is your final action for this okay. round for you scale three years. Um. So. Uh. So captain, you're probably going to want to dislodge those uh, beeping torpedoes. That's going to be Red's action. Um. So. Yeah, I was gonna say because I I'm I'm ready. I know yeah. what I'm doing. <laughs> Good. Uh. So I need a control plus con, for you for to perform a spacewalk. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of two. All right. How many mo how many momentum do you we have? You have five, so you have lots. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I don't five. have a lot for you right now, but there, your time will come. Not to worry. Okay. Cause, well, what I would like to do, I don't know how you want to do this, uh, exactly what your plan is. I'm going to use my um. Uh, value and do a determination. Uh, command is a slippery slope. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> then I, what I want to do, I also have focus of lead by example. And I was going to buy a die. And basically what my overall like super action was going to be is I want to dislodge them into his like hurt mouth. Basically. And... Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's do your control con first to see to okay. to do your spacewalk, and then we'll get to the test needed to dislodge the torpedoes. Okay, control con. Nice. I will buy the just so I don't fall on my ass. <laughs> what was the line from? Uh... What if I forget to uh, magnet? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tendy, never change. Okay, I don't really have anything for this unless temporal no. mechanics. No, temporal <laughs> mechanics doesn't help, but at least you got two successes. Yay! So, uh, you know, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. Don't look up, heel toe, heel toe. <laughs> right. Don't look down, heel toe. Okay, you're here. Uh, you <laughs> you come to the uh, mine launching tube, and yep, it's jammed. Uh, it appears that one of the footballs has. Uh, Dis or has a come out at an odd angle and has <clears throat> prevented it from dropping properly. Uh, so this is going to be uh, daring plus engineering or daring plus security to use this newfangled tool you have to dislodge them. Okay. All right. So let's see. Security and engineering are exactly the same, so it's not going to matter there. So, but yes, I'm going to use. Uh, my deter determination. Um, so, okay. daring. Cut out. What are you doing? <laughs> determination. Um, and then security. <clears throat> and and then announced that his um, hobby was actually plumbing. <laughs> yes. No. Darn Andorian checkers! I knew I should have taken. <laughs> If you had mining, I might have allowed that, but no. No. Okay. No. Uh, difficult right. of two to get this going. 
So that is a grand total of four successes. Um, did you get that third dice through momentum? I, buy, I said, yeah, I buy it. Buy it. Ah, I was okay. buying a momentum. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so that's four successes. So you get two momentum back. And the mines are dislodged. Uh, can you do me a favor and roll me eight challenge dice? Okay. Oh, I never set it up on this one. Yep. Yeah, you'll you'll have to go yeah. over to macros and click the in bar. Yep, I got it now. Yep. <clears throat> Seven total. Okay. That's pretty effective. And because, uh, let's see, they are photonic, so I believe that gives them high yield. So yeah. That's uh, they. You know, as you as they uh, you know, they appear large. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yep. Before you describe, call me Ishmael. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wasn't aware that Andorians read human poetry or human stories, or maybe there's an Andorian named Ishmael who hunted a whale. Who knows? Whale. <laughs> Either way, uh, despite them looking extremely large in your hand, they pale in comparison to the gigantic maw that could almost swallow your entire ship whole. Still, undeterred, and with various uh, lewd gestures following them, I'm sure, uh, the mines drift inwards and vanish eventually into the creature's gaping maw. Uh, you see uh, several small flashes go off as they make contact, and the creature seems to recoil a bit. But that's about it. So that is Red's turn. Um, I'm going to assume that you make a... Uh, you head back to the airlock... <laughs> Part of me does just wants to hang on the ship, but no. Yes, I will return back inside. <laughs> okay. That's that one. Uh, bad guy's turn. Let's do the this one here. So it is going to attempt to ram to D20. And that is not going to work. It needs two successes. It does not do it. Uh, let's do nope. this one. Okay. Uh, good guy's turn. So Concordia, orange, red, or no, orange, green, or blue. I realized I was muted. Um, <laughs> I would almost say we have... Orange, try and hi fire a harpoon again. Okay. Now this will. Now, um, because I'm you, anyone who's been keeping track, there are sixty-ish scorpion vessels, and by rough count, there are twelve of them on screen. If you want me to bring in more, just spend me uh, two momentum. Okay. You know, I'll treat them like reinforcements. Why not? Uh, I mean, we could do that. Bring in a, some here and to harpoon. Yeah. I mean, I like the idea of orange moving into harpoon, but I do. I also like the idea of bringing in reinforcements. Now, orange has already harpooned, so any weapons oh. test from them will be at increased difficulty. <sighs> hmm. Didn't they harpoon last round though? Uh, no, we're still. This is technically one round of combat. This Eight. is we uh, cycle actions within, you know, the departmental actions. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was interpreting 20. it. I was interpreting it as different rounds. Okay. Um. Then I say let's call in reinforcements into like E twenty nine or D twenty eight. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, spend two momentum, please. Two momentum. Okay. Yeah, I agree with, like, D28. Okay. Yeah. So coming from above and descending, or staying out of the uh, uh, the cloud comes purple. Uh, purple. Yay, purple! Adds a turn. 
And I am only going to give it one action because otherwise it's just before the round resets. Oh, that should be 3d20 because I'm counting the operator and the ship. Mm. And sadly, their harpoon f fire also doesn't work very well. But, you know, it was worth a shot, and they, they tried. They tried. Okay, uh, next up is going to be this one. Uh, this one is going to attempt to ram blue. And fail miserably. Okay, so we have, I believe it is green, orange, and the Concordia. And blue. Should we have blue drop its mines? Since it got over there? Yeah. I think that will that'll be good. Okay. Blue drops mines. Roll. 3d20. Horribly. I mean, it's a success. Uh, so the mines will... Uh, detonate, and they will deal some damage. Uh, let's see, eight because we're dropping two sets. Okay, not terrible, not terrible. It does damage on that. However, one of their ships blows up. It's it's too close to the uh, torpedo detonation, and is incinerated with the mine. That more or less passes unnoticed, however, because of the chaos that's currently going on everywhere else. Okay, so who's left on my front? Let's see, that's, he's gone. We've got to rethink of how I'm doing initiative in this game. It's just a bit clunky. Okay, so they've gone. Who's next? This one, the one by green. Okay, what does the one by green do? And it is... It fails. That fails, too. Okay. Make mental note. I need to make the Kythus pups harder to fight. Well, next time. Okay, good guys. Uh, we have green, orange, or the Concordia. Um... I'm thinking Concordia is going to actually going going to try to you know maybe detonate off a torpedo nearby the big kythus okay you know Ooh, i didn't mean to ping that um question okay. yes how would the power loss work um oh uh, yeah for you guys yeah like could one of the ship like uh "Quote unquote power loss." The uh, mama just oh, is draining. Like, we, right. Ah. We, I mean, we could play it around as like, yeah. you know, the ships are kind of swarming and distracting it. Mm -hmm. That is one of the properties of the um, harpoon. Okay. So the harpoon will count as a energy drainer because it's really the only way that these guys have a chance against this thing. Uh, okay. So, you just have to get a harpoon in, and, you know, things might get easier. Or harder. Who knows? Anyways, uh, Concordia, you're going to be blowing something up? I'm figuring a torpedo nearby at about 50% power, kind of to set it concussively. Ah, okay. Uh, so, you can... Yeah, so a torpedo typically is long range, so if you want to shoot it within medium range, that'll increase difficulty to four. And that does give me a point of threat, which I like. But yeah, we can do that. Yeah, why not? Okay. Uh, so if I believe it's Argo. Uh, Chief of, or Tactical Officer Argus, I think his name was. Uh, Lagos. 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 Uh, so someone could pull up Lagos, please. And the sh so that's... Shizno. Yeah, Shizno. I'm sorry, I haven't had much for uh, Moose this turn yet. But his turn will come. That sounds ominous. Wahahahahaha. <laughs> oh, I think Moose is gone AFK. 
or muted, one or the other. Anyways, um, someone could pick up Legos, please. Just don't step on them. Mm. <laughs> bad, bad, bad. Oh. I mean, Aerith is my... I made him, yeah. but I can... Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Control security? Uh, yes, please. Control security, and the ship will assist with weapon security. Ship tactical systems? Oh, yes. That's one from Lagos. Who's getting the ship? Who's got ship? Hadrix? Okay, okay. Yep, I'll run the ship. Sure. And you said that's um, weapons? Weapons security, yep. <clears throat> Well, that's a critical. Uh, tell you what, I will let that succeed with at cost, so I'll take another point of threat. And can you please roll me challenge dice? I think it's six for your photon torpedoes. Actually, I probably should have asked if you were firing photons or quantums, but... Um, oh, photons. Yeah. Photons. All right, uh, roll me some challenge Wait. dice. What What was the difficulty to do it? Um, it was... He was three... taking it for four. Four because you're oh. shooting medium range instead of long. Sure. Okay. So that is three plus uh, high yield, which I believe is vicious. Plus, oh, no, oh, 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 and um, nuts, the weakness we had, we'd scanned for it. Oh, yes, that's right. Okay, I believe we get to roll extra challenge dice. I believe it was. I'm trying to two. look into it real quick. Yeah, I had it open, and then I moved it from my uh, PDF. Game piercing two quality, ignoring two of the target's resistance per effect rolled. Oh, so that's a significant amount of... Uh, so that basically negates almost all of its resistance, which is good, considering da damage itself was kind of mediocre. But that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, it The luminescence f from where, where it impacts... Uh, in space causes a large shockwave that dwarfs any of the mines that have been dropped to date. The ripples uh, catch it on its uh, on its uh, hind tail, causing it to uh, spin a little bit out of control. Which means... Did I make it to the inside the ship yet, or is that next round? That'll be next round. <laughs> that will be next round. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Killing the captain. No, the captain just feels a nice little breeze and kind of gets knocked over 90 degrees by his waist. <laughs> Magnet. <laughs> Magnet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, that's Concordia's turn. Uh, I believe we only have the Kythus left before the rest of the good guys get to go. And it is going to move far quicker than a something of its size should belie as it turns its attention back to... Well, it targets closest enemy, which in this case is still red. So, we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, well, that's a success and a critical fail. Uh, so, it is going to uh, take a bite out of... Well, it's going to go after the weak, the one it targeted before. So, uh, as the... Th um, Captain, you get a literal first-hand glimpse of this uh, soundlessly as the three of you in your formation uh, pivot uh, with precision maneuvering on your uh, impulse ring as all of a sudden the th one on the far far left of the formation is swallowed whole. Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Kythus don't fuck around. Um, however, it does... Uh, the crew has enough uh, sense about it to detonate their uh, core, causing a decent amount of damage to the poor creature. Which will be... Oh. That's a significant amount of damage. If I was doing starship combat, that would be a six... That would be at least three breaches. Okay. So, yeah. Um, 
that happened. Maybe instead of mines, you should be dropping uh, ships. Just a thought. <laughs> Just a thought. And I'm covered in space whale goo. <laughs> <laughs> mm, and guess what? It's it luminate. It's luminous. Yes. Okay. I, I make it into the airlock. It slimed me. <laughs> <laughs> Orange goes in and attempts to uh, scan for weakness to make any future attacks a little bit better. And in that task, it succeeds. So whoever does a weapons attack against the Kythus, the Kythus next does well. Or will have a bit of a better chance to hit. Or at least deal more damage. And finally, Green is going to drop a f attempt to drop more mines. And that is going to be a success. And that is going to do... Let's roll the challenge dice, but I think I know the outcome to this one. Yep, that is barely enough to send this one packing. <clears throat> okay, so, out of the end piece. So that is all of the Scorpy Craft and Kythus Pups. All that's left is the... Nope, that is there. That... Stop. That there. That is there. So all that's left before we uh, begin a new set of actions is the Concordia and the Kythus. Um, so Kythus, uh, you have some tasks. Uh, let's see, engineering could do something. Uh, you've expended a couple power to get where you are. Um, there's, your shields are still at, at peak thing. You could attempt to generate some form of advantage. Uh, captain could do an action to generate momentum. Some form of rallying. Or you could just shoot at the thing with high levels of difficulty. Mm. I say we try to rally the troops. Okay. I was thinking, yeah, I mean... <coughs> okay. So that is... Good. Uh, so I believe that is a presence plus command test for you, Mr. Hadrix. Oh... And if you have something like inspirational speeches, diplomacy, morale-boosting activities as a focus, those would work. You have to have diplomacy. Come on. I actually have composure. I'll let that work, yeah. And you said presence and command? Pres presence and command, yep. <laughs> that sounded ominous. Well, it should. That's you know what? More and ominous. actually, just for just for giggles, because I don't know if I'm actually going to use it this um at this point, I'm going to pop my determination just okay. just for giggles. Okay. Um, the hallmark of teamwork is respect. So that's a good one. Yeah. And that's two momentum for you guys. Nice. Nice indeed. Okay that one uh, let's see that is both of that uh, let's see the Kythus doesn't have a heck of a lot of actions that it can do but what it's going to attempt is a scan for weakness and it will succeed <clears throat> it gets to do more damage against the team that's been shooting at previously which is the red team Hi, Captain. <laughs> oh, God. Uh huh. So you have. And it's easy. Our Lieutenant Lagos is easily um, keeping an eye on the Captain's skiff. And it no, he is keeping you well informed as to where the Captain is in relationship to the Kythus, which is dangerously close. Does, he, does, does the bridge crew know that I'm outside the ship? <laughs> I... <have>. Um, <laughs> um, Lagos, are you saying that the captain is outside of their ship? <laughs> yes, well. sir. Okay, fearful. <laughs> uh Okay, uh, we're up to uh, Concordia. So you have two more actions that you can do. 
And just for sake of expediency, if you just want to do them both now, we can move along. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's rescan for weakness, because I think once we use it and have deployed it, yep. then we have to do it again. Correct. So I say another scan for weakness. Okay. Which I think that was... Uh, that what? is Could... going to be an insight science, I believe. Right. And I was going to use Dresden on that and use his ash. No, there was no focus to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, control science. And this is going to be a difficulty of two, because you've already done that once this combat round. And the ship will assist with sensor security. Okay, okay. that's one Oops. from Dresden. Who's got the ship? Uh, I can get it. I don't have it up. Sensors. What science? Uh, sensor security. science. Oh no, sorry, sensor security. Thought you said security, and then yeah. I forgot about it. So did I, apparently. Yeah. All right. So that is one momentum. <laughs> nice. And it we is max. marked for weakness. Uh, so it doesn't. It's going to attempt to. <sighs> Do a take another bite out of the red team. It's going to succeed. Oh my! Oh no, it can't because it would be in increased difficulty, which it doesn't. Lucky. Whew. And for its final thing, is it's going to move? Just do a small move, just over. Here. Uh, no, it's going to move in this general direction. Okay, so once now we reset the board. Uh, let me just reset everyone's momentum. Enter. There. This is STA Space Combat with Whales. Yes. Well, technically space paleosaur fish kind of things, but yeah, close enough. <laughs> I think that's everyone. It is indeed. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, good guys get to go again. Um, at this point, crackles go out over the uh, Scorpy Com net that uh, we've driven off one pup. We've only lost two. To which, Patrick, you're kind of surprised and dismayed at the amount of cheering that's going on at the phrase "only lost two." Yeah, that is, I am kind of dismayed by that. <laughs> Gun Gunther would like to attempt to shoot the giant space fish thing. <laughs> sure, Gunther, go ahead and shoot the giant space fish thing. This is going to be a control plus security. All right. And Surprisingly shoot. enough, I don't have a talent for this, but you know. <laughs> I mean, you know. Oh. Uh, what, what's the oh. difficulty? Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of two. Okay, um, we have the momentum. I'll take a momentum for a third die. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Nice. So that's uh, two momentum right back. So you have one floating. Uh, you also have a complication from when the ship tried to assist you. Oh, good. Yeah. Could so... we buy off the complication? I mean, normally I'd say not, but I will let that happen just because you rolled so well. Yay. Okay. Uh, if you could please roll me uh, five challenge dice, please. Okie doke. And what we're looking for here is effects. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's use momentum to re-roll this three zeros. Okay. Down to four. Okay, we got an effect. One. Okay, cool. you got an effect. That's good. Uh, there's a loud ka -chunk sound as the harpoon is fired from the uh, from the sh from the ship and a loud thrumming sound as power begins to f flow through it it sails through the uh, it sails through the void uncoiling loops of wire that have been just uh, lashed to the hull and impact themselves along where a traditional fish's gill line would be The Scorpion board uh, flick a series of buttons and a 
you can literally feel the static electricity emanating around the power cables jolting or shunting through the uh, system as it goes into the space into the kythus ooh pretty yes congratulations you have scored <laughs> Deep fried captain. <laughs> well, as long as we don't get in the radiation band of the neutron star. Yeah. Uh, captain, you have finally made it back inside. Thank you. Uh, can, you please, Yay. can you please roll me a fitness plus medicine test? Okay. This is going to be difficulty of two. You like a momentum? I, you know what? I think I will. see what you got what you got okay duly noted okay my antenna are gonna fall off <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you'll be fine absolutely fine nothing to worry about at all it'll just be one antenna yep <laughs> okay so well because he is the uh source of all the because he's having the most fun kythus is going to go uh, because he's moved into Orange's area, it's going to attempt a swipe at WoW. wow. Uh, no, oh. it, it has been rolling so many complications. Um, <laughs> this is not D&D. Those are not good numbers. <laughs> I have no idea how to... You know what? Um, it has left it open for an attack. So as a complication, the Orange fleet is going to get one free mind drop. Uh, three. And it will do. It will do. Uh, nope. We need four challenge dice because we're only launching one. Okay. The mine sadly doesn't have enough damage. It's geared more to deal with the pups, not the big thing. But, you know, it tried. There was an effort made. Somewhere. Next up is one of the good guys. So Concor uh, Concordia. <laughs> Concordia or one of the good guys. Um, um, should we have Green come in and try to um, take the baby off of us since we're weakened? That's probably a good idea, actually. All right. Okay, it's within close I'm... range, so mines it'll do in a mine attack. Pay it no mind. Ooh. <laughs> wow. Wow. Apparently it won't. Good golly, Miss Molly. Okay, I, no more puns. You know, these, uh... You know, if we were playing D&D, &D, we'd be singing a completely different tune. <laughs> but... True enough. That is only one success and a complication. And the complication in this part is um, whatever role they do next will come at an increased complication, at an increased difficulty level. Okay, that was green, which is this one here. <clears throat> next up is one of the Kythus pups. How about the one fighting blue? Let's do the one fighting blue. Nope. Nope. Okay, that was that. Who's next? Bring in purple. Okay, purple and the harpoons. <laughs> That's a success. It l latches on with several harpoons. And will... Ooh, that's a good amount. Oh. <clears throat> that is a very good amount. Um, Concordia, uh, the Dresden, you are report. Uh, your internal sensors are indicating that the internal energies of the creature are beginning to cease. Commander Hatrix, I think that the, I think that harpoon took it out. Well, it's still thrashing, but it's not thrashing as fast. 
Okay, okay they really hurt it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Ensign. I say that would probably. Well, I'd say that's probably a really good chance. For, oh wait, that was just purple doing that. So yep, you that, probably have one more tot. Yeah, I have some. Yeah, it's my turn to do stuff. So, let's see. Kythus is already gone. How about? Well, congratulations. Um, uh, this one is going to attempt to ram green. And Ooh. fail. And fail. Okay. Um, good guys go. Uh, Concordia. Uh, orange. I say we try... I say we try to do another detonation of a torpedo, but we try to nail it. Like right there? Yeah, I was actually thinking a little south, like uh, K-29. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, control security. Ship will assist with weapon security. And uh, that will be K-29. I'll call that long range, so that'll only be three, three momentum. Or, no, three difficulty. All right, I threw out the ship. One from the ship. And who's got Legos? Oh, that's me. He's not my main character, so I forget about him. Control. Yeah. That's all right. Security. Two. Focus. Uh -huh. Oh, nice. Great. Okay. Uh, roll me some challenge dice, please. Six. And we're still doing six, I think you said? I bel Well, uh, whatever, the, whatever the Concordia sheet says, yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> That's pretty darn decent. Okay. A, uh, a chunk the size of a small country is blown off the side of the, uh, um, blown off the side of the, uh, Kythus from the effects of the, uh, shockwave. And that is sufficient enough to drop the creature. Well, not drop it per se, but take whatever fight it had out of it. The internal, uh, the thrashing ceases, and the dragging of the ship around from, uh, bonk, sorry, bumped the mic, from the uh, ships is enough to, well, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that train of thought. The, 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 ch by being attached to it, you're no longer fighting the, the thrash of the uh, Kythus, and all begins to simmer down a little bit on the ships. And in D&D terms, if not processing, copyright infringement, how do you want to do this? <laughs> so, eventually, eventually, the other one, the small babies are driven off with a few other proximity mines, and the surviving sh uh, sh Scorpy ships uh, come in and attach their own harpoons to it. There is a cheer of celebration as several of them begin to tow the sh I'll just move us back to the pretty map right now. Copy that. Back to here. Uh, there is a cheer of uh, over the radio net as the Scorpy or as the uh, Scorpy hunt is extremely and wildly successful. Uh, on board your on board your ship, uh, Captain, uh, you receive a pat on the lower back from the captain. Um, however, at this point in time, you start feeling a little bit of vertigo. Um, and anyone looking at the Andorian would realize that his skin is a far paler blue than previously. Uh, Captain Art, are you good? Don't think so. Thunk. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget I'm covered in blue g sh ectoplasmic shiny blue goo. <laughs> uh, okay, well. So, and, so, as you guys are celebrating and you figure out, and you, uh, begin to set course for home uh, USS Concordia and several other uh, ships as you guys are beginning to leave the accretion disk several of the other Scorpy ships 
are violently pulled back in and I need the USS Con I need the Concordia so if Primrose can please do a daring plus con and the ship will assist with structure plus uh, engineering please and this is going to be an opposed role oh. okay there's the oh. ship let's see um is does this task require precise maneuvering or a collision risk? Mm, no, it does not. Okay. I uh, said it was what difficulty? This will. Uh, it was an opposed roll, and you need. Oh, to, that's right. Yeah. You need four. Yeah, you okay. need four. Four. Um, so the ship didn't get nothing. ship did diddly. So do you want all three momentum for yes. the fourth die? <laughs> Um, hazard avoidance or helm operations here? I'll call hazard avoidance something, yes. <clears throat> Let's do this. Mm. Okay. Cool. You so got your success. You succeed. Congratulations. Uh, but there's a complication. No. So. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Unless you have a reroll. I don't. <laughs> So everyone is uh, very pleased with themselves and how everything has turned out. Uh, when all of a sudden, as you begin to move away, there is a sudden lurch as the ship's inertial dampeners are unable to, or as the ship feels like it's being dragged somewhere. Um, all of anyone who is uh, sitting down in the Starfleet approved uh, safety chairs are prevented from leaving their seats thanks to an emergency force field that acts as a seat belt. <clears throat> and the for a second, you're not able to figure out what it is. But Primrose, you managed to evade the worst of it. Uh, however, uh, down in engineering, uh, Moose is reporting a 20% power loss of the ship. No, not Velma! As this garden is displeased with that loss in power. Mm -hmm. So, as you guys see that there has been something else keeping an eye Ooh. on oh, things. Oh, Mega um, Rayquaza? <laughs> 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 yes, and it is very interested in, ex in learning more and more about you. But, this is going to be our time to take a break. So, let's be back in, let's say... 10-ish <laughs> minutes, so 20 after the hour. Okay, and this good. is where we find all the different colored Scorpion ships combined to make Scorpabot. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think that's the case, but maybe Please? maybe if you spend Please? enough momentum for the advantage. Anyways, <laughs> back, <laughs> back in a few minutes. Bye-bye. <laughs> And we're back, folks. Slightly earlier than the countdown intended, but hey, we're here. Let's get going. So, uh, you guys are attempting to escape the accretion disk when part of the accretion disk attacked you. And it didn't just attack you. It attacked and took down several other Scorpy ships, wrapping it in its uh, multi-colored uh, tendrils and crushing them. Uh, thankfully, Captain, you're not one of them. Um, did I just... Nope, there I am. Open. The... Right, because I'm unconscious on the deck, so yeah. hey. <laughs> uh, calls over the uh, Scorpicom. Uh, there are shouts of something about... They seem to be referring to this thing as a Solintra. Um, you're not able to make much out of it, uh, except on the internal Scorpicraft that you guys are on. Uh, Cavern just w l lets out a low whistle and goes, Oh, bloody hell. He, that bugger wasn't lying. Those things are a real thing. Well, can't do much about it right now. Gotta get this thing back home. Uh, what about the other ships that are out there? Well, if they're smart, they'll come with us and try to escape that thing. 
If not, if they try to fight it, they might die. Either way, sadly, as cool as it might sound, well, always it's a high. It's a, these things are a bit of a high risk, high reward kind of gambit. Those of us that can come home and produce these types of things are much lauded by the score by our people. And after all, it's our duty to help the Scorpia as much as we can, isn't it? We let go of the tether now. Our, we could lose this uh, Kythus to the soul, to the pulsar. L once we lose in the accretion disc, we ain't gonna find it again. Have to do this whole th song and dance once, once again. Ah, he pauses. Ah, mm, looks down at the uh, captain, and then flicks open a private channel. Hey, uh, Concordia, this is, uh, uh, this is, a uh, Cavern's Lament here. Uh, you, uh, got something on your tail, but if you can do it and, you know, use that magical, uh, beam away thing, your captain here is not looking all that good. Uh, ate a bit too much radiation while preventing us from exploding. Will you read your Cavern's Lament? Then I go ahead and I um, probably turn to Lagos. It's like, Lagos, can we beam the captain back from that ship from here? Uh, not in the accretion disc. Not without a. Not without getting closer. Not without getting and closer, sir. Not without dropping the shields, <coughs> which is keeping all the radiation and currently us alive from the thingy outside. Uh, I don't know if you were here when. I mentioned it the first time there, uh, uh, Moose, but thanks to a whip attack from this creature, you, the ship has lost roughly 20% of its power. Okay. Uh, also, while you're, in the, while you're in the accretion disk, you can't form a stable warp field. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, first task is, what are you going to do about this creature? Or are you going to just try to keep escape evading it and try to make it to the captain? Uh, Commander Hadrix, what's your orders? My orders are going to be... Scanning this new entity and seeing if it has a weakness similar to the Kythus. Okay, uh, so if uh, so, this is a new scene. Uh, so you lose one momentum. And I. <laughs> there we go. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, if someone could please roll me, uh, I think it was who was it? Dresden, Dresden with the control. Yeah. Si yeah, with the control science. Yeah. Uh, Dresden control science and ships with uh, sensor science. Difficulty of. Uh, two. So you got it with Dresden. Who got the ship? I got it. <clears throat> nice. Okay. Uh, so this creature um, measures roughly 18 uh, miles long. If it was stretched from head to tail. Its uh, thickest diameter would be roughly around its head. Which is, which is approximately probably about 500 meters or so in diameter. So it's a long skinny boy. And it is it uh, has apparently absorbed so much radiation from this nebula that it is exuding it. So it's somehow adapted to live in this environment. It has multiple long tendrils. Uh, no obvious um, perception organs. But yet it seems to be able to discern uh, uh, discern where you are and attack. And so with your high resolution sensors, you get one free question. Mm. And how do we beat this thing is not a question. <laughs> um. So I kind of have a science-ish question. Mm -hmm. Um. Obviously, you said it doesn't have eyes, but it's able to sense. Are we able able to confuse it by emitting uh, radiation that it's not familiar with? Oh, good question. Um, 
Mm. I would say that you can certainly use that. Uh, um, if you had the momentum to create the advantage, I would say that that would be the best way forward. Um, but you only have one momentum right now. So if you can find other ways to generate momentum, then yes. Uh, so it may take some calibrating of the deflector dish to do something along those lines. But yeah, or the Boussard collectors. But yeah, that can uh, be done. More isn't on the Concordia, otherwise I could use my talent. Yeah, well, you have a chief engineer down below that could do stuff. Well, I have Spirit of Discovery, so I just uh, burn a, my determination and get three momentum. Huh, nice. But yeah, um, but more is over here. Yeah, so <laughs> perhaps getting your senior staff back together might be a good idea there, Commander. Or you know, do what you want. I shouldn't be telling you what to do. But yeah. Hello, Hadrix. Mm, sorry. Um, with this information that you've gotten from Dresden, uh, you could confuse it, but it would take some reconfiguration of your uh, deflector dish or Boussard collectors to generate the radiation to confuse it. Or you can simply just try to out outmaneuver it, shoot it, try to communicate with it, hold a conference mm -hmm. room to discuss the uh, ethics of shooting it. You know. <laughs> I don't think we need to go with the last option. <laughs> Um, it's self-defense. There's no ethics involved. Mm -hmm. I'd say let's see how this thing deals with evasive maneuvers. Okay. Yeah. And by this thing, I mean both the ship and um, the creature. But while we're you know taking evasive maneuvers towards the captain's vessel. Okay. Get uh, get samples. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, callbacks. Okay, so I believe that evasive maneuvers is going to be a control plus con task. The ship will assist with weapons plus engineering. Or no, weapons plus engines. No, blah! Engines plus con. There we go. If I spout out enough words in random order, they'll eventually make sense, right? That's exactly how it works. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's daring. what you do anyway. Daring plus con, sorry. And the ship will apparently assist with structure plus con. Alright. So uh, who's the got the ship? I got the ship. Mostly because the sheep is already up. Makes sense. And it helped. Okay, alright. Yeah. Okay, yeah, got so you. you got uh, one momentum out of the deal. So that makes the ship all the harder to hit. Is it bad I really want a saucer separate? I mean, sure. Two smaller targets. Ooh, that's... Uh, that is... So, uh, you start maneuvering around the creature. And all of a sudden, um, you, you make your way about halfway until one of the uh, tendrils in its midsection lashes out at you. And we'll start dealing some damage this time. Uh, let's do... Some challenge dice. Okay, Ooh. that is six, and that is. Luckily, uh, we have five resistance. Yes, yes, you do. Uh, it would help if I had the creature's sheet up right. <clears throat> um, oh, I should have rolled one more dice. Oh, no, I got it right the first time. Okay, so we got that, and we've got those and that. Cool. So, uh, the starship loses two more power, which I believe is now at less than what is it had previously. So, so we lost 20%, you said? Yeah, so you lost 20% from the get-go, and now you've lost another, ten, another two. So we're at six out of ten power. Because 20% would have been knocked just down to 8. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I will spend a couple threat to shave off a pair, uh, two of your resistance. So at least you'll take a couple points of shield damage. So I believe that will be uh, 5, 
damage. You have resistance of five. You're now shaved off four. So you take four points of damage, so that's just four off your shields. Got it. <clears throat> we got nine shields left. And just to double check, I think you said that was, what, difficulty one for us? Yep. So you did it. It made you harder to hit, but he still hit you. Right, but we then gained an extra momentum, so we're up to two. Yes. That's right. Which that would make us get the advantage. <laughs> it could. It could indeed. Sorry, I'm conscious. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I was thinking, because... Yeah, so now that we have the momentum, as we're starting to move again, then, let, you know, we talk to, you know, science and engineering to try to deploy off a radiation that is enough that could possibly, mm, which way do we want to do this? Confuse it or make us kind of fall into the background? Okay. I mean, we could kind of do a little bit of both. Uh, I know I just kind of said it out of a joke, but if we saucer separate, then for one, we can send the saucer over to get the captain and save him and get us that, but it leaves the star drive to be able to emit the radiation and kind of uh, confuse it. Oh, oh, do I really want to saucer separate on my first command? Sorry. Oh, wait, I already broke. I already broke the ship the first time. Yeah, yeah, you already broke it once. So, you know. You know, that's a fun idea. Let's sauce this up. Okay. Uh, so, what sex? What sex? Where? Whereabouts are you going to be, Hadrix? I will be on the main bridge, so okay. I'll be in the saucer. Okay. Um, I know you're not feeling well right now, uh, Moose. But how do you feel about taking command of the star drive? Or would you rather uh, someone else do it? He BRB a few minutes oh, ago, so I don't. Okay. All right. Um, I think Moose isn't feeling too well. I'm afraid. That's a shame, but he doesn't. Does that mean for Liza's in charge of the bridge on the other oh, half? Oh boy! Uh, yeah. So I got this. <laughs> no, 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 no Zax. Uh, so uh, for Liza, uh, yeah. So I guess, uh, yeah, Moose is busy dealing with engineering stuff. So the command, I suppose, would fall to for Liza. He just popped up. I'm back. Hey, Moose, you feel like taking command of the Star Drive section? Uh, sure. Okay. I'm actually feeling a little bit better. <laughs> Glad to hear, man. Okay, so uh, I need a Control Plus Contest from the Concordia. And I believe it's Primrose. Yeah. And this is a difficulty what? Uh, let me just double check the talent. I believe it is difficulty of... It's difficulty of three. So Control Plus hey. Con for Primrose. Structure Plus Engineering for the ship. Uh, I will take a moment over a third die. Okay. That's four for Primrose. Awesome. And who's got the ship? I'll toss the ship. Gotcha. Thank you. Structure engineering. All nice. Right. Nice. So two more momentum for you guys. Okay. So, where once there was one, now there is two. <clears throat> okay, so, um, Commander Hadrix, if you could please relay the plan to Moose, who is stay taking command of the Star Drive section. Moose, what we're going to do is you're going to lay out a radiation field that's going to try to obfuscate the kind of go against, you know, a radiation that goes against what it seems to be similar to. And then we're going to use one that will be exactly the same to kind of obfuscate us and go towards the captain's shuttle that he's in. Understood. Okay. So... Just because we haven't seen the set piece that I'm using yet for the auxiliary bridge, here we go. I don't know if Moose, don't know if Moose would actually be in auxiliary bridge or in engineering, but there he is, center chair. You go, Moose. <laughs> um, all by my lonesome. 
Oh, we'll oh. To... Yeah, we'll have to come up with support characters for down here. Um, I'll probably poke you folks for that this week. Um, let's put... Put Finn in, fin in, in there? Fin yeah, let's put Finn <laughs> I mean, come on, three sh three episodes and we've done two separations. We're good. <laughs> and we can see put... a trend here. Yeah, Cathos Cathos can go in there yep. too. So oh, oh, Cathos, good enough. <clears throat> Little bud. Yeah. <laughs> Little bud. Okay. Uh, so let's do a quick task to do that stuff. So this is going to be a control. No, daring plus engineering, and the star drive section will assist with. Actually, because you're both doing it. Um, okay. So the advantage is only going to protect one of you. The other one is going to roll for it. Uh, which side of you do you want... Which section do you want protected by the advantage? Uh, saucer section, because that has families aboard. Okay. Saucer section is protected by the advantage. So um, on the star drive section, if you could please roll me daring plus engineering... And the starter will assist with structure plus engineering or structure science, whichever one you want. The difficulty uh, is momentum. difficulty is going to be a two here. All right. I'll roll structure engineering for the star drive. All right. Uh, experimental technology, Jerry rigging, work for mechanics, or EPS. Uh, EPS, oddly enough, in this situation. Okay, what do we got here? Nothing from the ship. Two for Moose. Moose did. Moose did good. Okay. That was the two successes you need. Uh, Lieutenant Fennell is reporting that the uh, Boussard collectors have been reconfigured to generate uh, inverse ra an, an inverse radiation field. Sure, that's techno babble. And we switch to the outside cam where the Boussard collectors are ejecting a form of blue gas, which is stark contrast against the bright pinks and purples. But for a few moments, anyways, the creature doesn't see you, giving the saucer section enough time to make its way over here. <clears throat> now, I'm... I bel I've really need to confirm this, but I believe that sickbay would reside primarily in the saucer section. Um, so, uh, for Lisa, you're getting alerts that the shields are going to go down and radiation might be permeating the ship. Might not be long, oh. but, you know, we'll see. Good. I believe we actually have a proper transporter chief support character for this role, don't we? We do, I believe. That would be uh, Senior Chief Petty Officer Tagan. Yes. So, if someone could please pick up Tagan. I think I'm the one that made Tagan. I don't even remember anymore. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Someone pick him. And we need to get a... I'll save me. Okay. <laughs> sure. Go, go for it, man. Okay. Um, so, you're trying to beam people off of this in crummy conditions. This is going to be a difficulty four test. Yay! Okay. Uh, the ship... Uh, sorry, go control ahead. Control or daring? Uh, control. Uh, control plus engineering. Ship will assist with sensors plus engineering. Difficulty I, four. I almost say, like, uh, bio dice with momentum and then buy another with thread because this seems important. Yeah, just a little bit. Works for me. Yeah. So we're going to buy a thread. Okay. Use momentum. So 40, 20 and then we got transporters. Come on, baby. That's Save my life. Come on, baby. Okay, that's two from Tegan. We need a critical success from the ship. Rolled two fifteens. It was so close. I can do the ship. All right. Oh, yeah, I still have Star Drive up. Sorry. 
Yeah, we need to. Yeah, roll saucer. What is uh, sensor science? Is that what? Uh, it is? Sensors engineering. <clears throat> Okay. All right. Yep. Give me a second here. What we got back didn't last long. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, good news is uh, you got Void Runner and Moore are back on board. Bad news is, is that you couldn't get a lock on the captain before the shields had to be raised to pre prevent further radiation from permeating the ship. I have an idea. Oh? I want to see if we can launch a uh, multi-mission uh, probe that's okay. capable of warp. That's going to emit a signal that's going to make this thing go crazy for it. Either to attack it or try to mate with it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a... Well, I've heard of stranger ideas that have worked. Uh, roll me a daring plus science test, please. Uh, this will be a difficulty of two to, to, to prepare. And if you had someone that had, you know, exo... Uh, I, I guess exo-anthropology... If that's hey, actually... you know what? what? I do. I do have someone with that. Do you now? <laughs> okay. I do. It's our um, Alarak. He has anthro uh, xenoanthropology, xenoarchology, and exosciology. I think Soci that would... sociology. <laughs> I think that would be a good one for him. Um. Yeah. So if he can take it, and then he can be assisted by someone doesn't so, some engineer or science guy. Oh, uh, it'll just be moose. <laughs> okay. Moose, we'll just go down with them. <laughs> okay. Uh, difficulty of two. All right. And... Yeah. Oof. Well, let's hope I crit. Am I doing the engineering daring? Uh, yeah, probably daring engineering. Whichever one makes sense for you. Um, your assistant won't matter. Yeah. Oh. Without... Without oh, yeah. one success from him, that's not going to yeah. do the trick, I'm afraid. Uh, the pro the probe is prepared, launched, and fired, but the creature doesn't take much in the way of notice to it, except uh, a couple absent-minded thwaps at it with one of its minor tendrils. But once it escapes its grasp, it doesn't really care. Instead, it will focus back on the ship. Well, first of all, it has to find you. Let's see if it does that. Hey, it finds you. Hey, it finds a torpedo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to fire a torpedo on it, you're welcome to do so. No. <laughs> okay. Um, Captain Hadrick, or Commander Hadrix might be Captain pretty darn quick. Um, <laughs> do you want to try again, or do you have other ideas? You said that the ships are, si are size 3? Uh, yes, the uh, Scorpy ships are scale 3. Or scale 3, yeah. Yeah. And that would not fit in our... Wait a minute. <clears throat> if you had the extended or the expanded shuttle bay talent, I would probably allow it. But, I mean, you could always try taking a shuttlecraft over there. That would be fun. Don't be attractive beams. Mm. You just have them eject I say we body into space and track oh, the beam aboard. Let's not say we did. I mean, he's in an environmental suit. Well, he's already got radiation, damn it. I mean, wait. Yeah, oh, more radiation. <laughs> Dr. Verliza... Can we try to keep as many people furthest away from any possible radiation zones? We're going to have to drop the shields again to try to beam back with the captain. Um, I can do my best, but I can't necessarily make guarantees, but I'll I'll get right on it. Okay. Uh, presence plus medical, please. 
for you, Doctor. Yay. And the ship's saucer will assist with structure plus engineering. Basically, to f get as many people to the safest areas as possible. Structure. This will be a difficulty of one. Okay. <clears throat> oh, the Concordia is assisted. Yeah, good stuff. Um, I do not have a focus here, so... There's three, so you get two nice. momentum. Nice. Okay. Got I'm it. assuming by this point, Ensign Moore has made it to the bridge. Yes. Okay. I'd be darting. <laughs> yeah. And Gunther Voidrunner is, just for funsies, is probably going to run with him. Because he has got nowhere else to go. Okay. Are you ready to do this again? Yep. Okay. We'll cut back to the transporter room. Where Mr. Tegan is going to try again. Uh, so same check as last time. Um, control plus engineering. Uh, ship saucer will assist with uh, sensors engineering. And this would be a difficulty of four. Take the momentum and then give him a threat. Okay. I'm just saying that's probably what we should do. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. <clears throat> Have at it. That's one well, from the saucer. Oh. You want me to do it, Captain? Um, does his computer? Does his computer just? Oh, his computer died. Did something. Oh, fun. Yeah, if you, someone roll Tegan, please. And uh, control engineering? Uh, yes, please. Four with the focus. Ooh. Well, that's uh, wow. seven successes in total. So, yeah, you uh, got three momentum from that. Wow. And be so you have him. Uh, but he is un he is sadly quite unconscious. Tegan just hits his bad badge. Medical emergency in the transporter room. It's the captain. Uh, for Eliza, was probably already on his way. Uh, for Eliza, daring plus medicine, please. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Uh, I believe this is definitely uh, emergency medicine as a focus. Yeah. And you said it was difficulty what again? Uh, difficulty of two. Okay. Uh, I shall take a momentum for a third die. All right. <clears throat> There's the three, three successes, so one momentum right back. Radiation poisoning and holy crap, it's bad. Thankfully, he's an Andorian, and their uh, their uh, systems are pretty tough against this sort of stuff, given their environment. But still, he needs sick bay now. Okay. Yep. Yeah, uh. Yeah. Taking him to sick bay. Um. Oh God. Just what I needed. More work. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So, next next up is Moose versus the space. Um, eel. Mega Rayquaza, as it has already been called. So, <laughs> Moose, what's your next plan to escape this darn thing? We can't make a stable warp field to get us to warp out, correct? Correct. You have to get out of the accretion disk first. Mm, but we don't need a stable warp field for long. No, no you don't. I propose we attempt to make one for long enough for the computer to initiate a short warp jump. So the, oh. the, the, so the moment it's calculating and counting down to when the field will be formed for that split instant, we warp. Picard maneuver, more yeah. risky. <laughs> I'm cool with it. I mean, but I'm the GM, so... Really? Are you guys cool with it? Well, he's the captain, so he gets to do it. <laughs> hey, hey, if you think Velma can take it, do it. 
Oh, I think Velma can take it. Velma and Betty putting them through their through, through their uh, paces. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is going to be a daring plus engineering test, I believe. And I have warp core mechanics as a focus. I believe that will do the trick. At this point, I'm assuming you've uh, re- taken your command chair down to engineering. I just have a post. <laughs> it's just a console that's like, yeah, this is where I'm at right now. I imagine that to be the case. Well, let's just actually do this from engineering because it would be thematic. And I want to pop the value. If going by the book doesn't work, write a new one. Oh, That's definitely one that would do the trick. Okay. Uh, special, uh, because he's had to drop out due to technical problems, Zach's looks at... I am... Batting crazy, lad! Do you know what could happen if we're, we're even 1% off? <laughs> Moose will just grin. <laughs> yes. Uh, Kelso's mad. The uh, Nalu representative um, in engineering just looks at both of you, shakes his head, just goes, bipedals are crazy. About Zach, you, Zach, you realize I wrote most of the books that were used by the engineers that made the later ships, right? We're fine. Oh, I thought you just self-published for ego. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, daring plus engineering. Uh, ship will assist with computers plus engineering. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a difficult... You know what? I'm just going to dump whatever threat I have. This is going to be difficulty five. Go for it. Oh, jeez. Okay, All I got right. the ship. And how much uh, momentum do we have uh, actually left? Three. Three? Okay, well... well there's one success from the ship. I will You're... take that momentum. Three for the... Uh... Mm-hmm. It's just two for the third yeah. guy. Oh, I took Bud. <laughs> no, not Bud! <laughs> no! Bud goes flying off. <laughs> He looks very perturbed as he retracts his arms into his chassis. <laughs> <laughs> Crap, where is Bud? <laughs> there he is, he's back. Don't worry, Bud is fine. <laughs> I did not be uh, this like him. Oh, let's hope. Yep. Uh, so that is four. Let's see what the ship gets. Yeah. Ship, oh, already, ship well, already got five. one. Okay, so there's our five. So five, got it. So within a brief second... Uh, you are able to successfully warp clear. It lasts for 0.5 of a second, but it's enough to jump you approximately um, about a million, million or two kilometers away from the accretion disk. It is not a smooth ride. Oh, to Moose, it feels like a smooth ride. It feels how the old NX ships feel. <laughs> <laughs> Violently <laughs> shaky. You're like, mm, yes, home. <laughs> He's like, see, Zex, we're fine. Okay. One taste copper. <laughs> Commander, it feels like my second wife. <laughs> ah, welcome back. Just in time. I had to, I was checking to make sure it works. So. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Don't worry, I did get some Zach swearing in in your absence, so everything's fine. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Zex. Good... Oh, go ahead. Zex, when you panic, you look like someone pulled a little of a cloth mop and used it to put out a fire. Don't worry. You got me here. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me, Lieutenant Commander. That's good to hear. <laughs> okay, so back... Probably was, actually. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I just want to message uh, the saucer section, like, Commander Hadrix. Moose, what's up? We are safe and clear. That is excellent to hear. We will stick with the Scorpio ships and escort them. Once you can keep around the accretion disk and keep away from the entity, rejoin with us in the saucer. Understood. Ah, so, uh, good news for Moose, anyways, is the creature doesn't seem interested in leaving the accretion disk. So, it juts its uh, triangular, well, it's massive moon-sized head out, realizes it doesn't like it out there. It's cold and uncaring, and it ducks back under. 
the bad news is, is that there's still a decent amount of Scorpy craft trying to drag a creature at speeds barely approaching light speed. So, um, Concordia, uh, if you could leave now, but they might not make it out in one piece. No, we'll assist any Scorpy ships that are stuck nearby to try to, to get, not to try to get them away and back with the rest of the fleet. Okay. Okay. Uh, so your sensors, now that they know what they're looking for, uh, Ensign Moore, you, you're back on the bridge. You hip check the acting science officer to the side and get in your console and uh, realize everything that is going completely wrong. And your sensors are telling you one thing. This thing's now approaching your group. Fast. Oh, the massive thing? Oh. Yeah. Um, I immediately initiate, or I communicate to the commander that, um, commander, we have incoming and we're going to be the first line of defense. Well, we're going to just have to... We'll defend them as best as we can. With what power we have. <laughs> yes. So, how are you going to do this? Hmm. If I'm going to make a suggestion, maybe we can... Um, I guess from Ensign Moore's scans, are we getting any sign of maybe the flight pattern of this thing? Uh, so it moves similarly to a sort of like an eel swimming. Okay. Uh, so its head more or less stays on a stable trajectory, whereas the rest of the body swivels and sways around it. Um, prob uh, Ensign Moore, you're able to see that it is using uh, controlled bursts of radiation to move around. And that seems to be what it's what is propelling it forward. Hmm. You know that swivel of a snake? Picture that in like three dimensions. Oh. Ooh. What would What would you guys think of Primrose using like those scans or whatever we're seeing from that thing to try and like coordinate a flight path with the other ships in order to make it easier to avoid this thing? I think it's a lot more maneuverable than what they are. <laughs> Or us. Right. We can try. Yes. Um, the problem is that those are other Scorpy ships are all sort of attached to one another. Yeah, they're tethered. Um, I was actually thinking, trying to use our phaser. Uh, you cut out there, Scotty. Um, aiming for spots where it would be. Oh, sorry. Oh, because I'm... My, oh, there it goes. My server ping dropped for a second. Um... I was thinking using the phasers, because that's our main weapon. I don't even know that we have photon launchers on the saucer. I say that you um, will. Um, I'll say that you have photons, but no quantums. Um, makes sense. I was thinking using the uh, phaser arrays and f basically aiming and firing of places where it will be. So as we are, as I'm analyzing it, seeing the pattern of how it's like moving its body and Okay. I mean, so that we're not necessarily hitting the head, but we're going to hit a part of the body as it moves. Right. Okay, so you're, like, trying to leg sweep it. Yeah, basically. Okay. Uh, contr control plus security. Uh, I'd have no threat left, so this is uh, difficulty of two. Ship will assist with weapon security. Oh. No threat yet. Security right. from Lagos. Yeah. Feel free to give me more, please. Difficulty two. Oh, Lagos gets an activation this time. He does. <laughs> he forgot to give him his activation. Um. Any suggestions? No. Nah, just make a note mm. and we'll do with it uh, after the session. Yeah, actually, what's I mean, it's pretty obvious. What's Lagos's um, 
Uh, security score? Four. Okay. Always go with the Talent of Cautious Security just as a nice catch-all for reroll. Yeah. That's a good one for, uh, for a tactical officer. Unless you're Worf. Worf doesn't do that. <laughs> We'll do cautious security and then I'll spend the momentum for a third. All right. And someone got the ship saucer. Ooh, ooh, three successes. All right. Yeah, I'll grab the saucer. Okay. Uh, what am I rolling for saucer? Uh, weapon security. Ah, cool. So that there is two momentum. So uh, you you are able to hit it. Uh, however, your uh, and that nah, more your sensors indicate that it has absolutely no effect. Probably the fact that the darn thing's got so much radiation in it already, the energy from the phasers is insignificant. That makes sense. I communicate that. Lagos will communicate that to Hadrix. Just the... Well. Seems to have no effect, sir. Well. That's going to be a walloping. Ooh. Grr. Mm-hmm. I get to roll some challenge dice. I have no threat to make this any better. So that is... Uh, five damage to you guys. And I don't um, think this thing has. Um, oh, but that has draining. That's. So you have five ooh. damage, which I believe is just negated entirely by your resistance. We have four. We're scale four. Oh, right, scale four. So you take one point of damage, and that is a drain of four. So you lose four power. Plus, we just fired. <laughs> yeah. You. So yeah, you you lost five power that round. Ooh. <clears throat> so um, basically you have to figure out a way to keep these guys safe for one more action then yeah, then they will be free and clear but this is going to be close I have an idea ah I, yeah so Concordia Star Drive watching from the sidelines it's you know not the both pretty looking at fights. It's gonna hail on over. Just an open communication so we can yeah. constantly talk. It's like, anyone have an idea how this thing sees? As far as we can tell, there's no necessary, no specific um, sensing apparatus that it uses. I'll actually give this but... to you now that you've come in so bloody close to it um, on multiple occasions and that more is there because science officer on deck is helpful. Uh, there is multitude of cilia uh, along all of its tendrils with a greatest concentration of it in its head. Uh, it's, with the, it's sort of like feeling hairs or whiskers just all over the damn thing's body. So it's, it feels by touch? Yeah, more like uh, senses energy currents, that sort of thing. Okay. <clears throat> like... You know what a flashbang is? I am aware of it, yes. Gotta rig up a couple of quantums with that type of idea. Detonate them in front of it, and hopefully the shock wave disrupts its ability to sense for a little bit. I like it, and I convey the message. Hey, Lagos, Mort, you're gonna <laughs> help me. Uh, sorry, who's gonna help? <laughs> More, because I, I need his scientific mind for how far... Uh, how much of a yield I can use on this, ah. and if there's any specific uh, wavelength I should attune it to. Okay. Okay, so Daring Engineering on the side of Moose, assisted by the Daring plus Science on Moore's side. And this is going to be a difficulty of three to prepare the torpedoes. Actually, no, let's make it difficulty two. <clears throat> After all, if Bones can perform surgical operations on a torpedo in the 22nd century, 
It's probably easier now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> would my sensor operation focus come into play? Uh, if you had astrophysics, I'd like that better. I have astrometrics and I have physics. I know I have astrophysics. <laughs> um, I'll let physics work. Are we both rolling or are you assisting? Oh, uh, he's assisting I'm... you. So you're you're okay. taking lead here. Okay. And I will take a momentum for a third dice. Sure thing. And then experimental technology, jury rigging. Yep. Fabrication. Yep. 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 Boop. Nice. Oh, very Five nice. Five successes. So you have two fan or you have, yeah that, that. you have two quantum torpedoes primed, ready in the tubes, and while their you know major detonation isn't going to be all that explosive, there it. You've basically rigged them to emit a massive shockwave in exchange for, you know, deadly payload. Yep. Yep. Excellent. All right. So, um, I believe it's Finian is currently tactical officer on board the Star Drive bridge. Uh, so if someone could pick up uh, Finial, that's it, Finial, um, because he's chief of security. I don't think he has a starship tactical system, so this will be fun. Um, so control security plus uh, weapon security from the star drive. Difficulty three for a torpedo, and it, I'd say it gives me threat, but it doesn't really matter by this point. Let's see, uh, I'll grab Fenil. Sure. Uh Let's do let's do a momentum for a third die. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Three from Finial. And who's got the star drive? Captain, you want to get the star drive? Sure. On it. All right, Bashir, uh, weapons plus security. They always have a focus, right? Yep, starships all. Yep, assist starships always have focus, but not this time. So, but that's enough. That's fine. Finial is a, or Finil is able to take care of it. Uh, t two quantum torpedoes launch themselves from the star drive section. They fly silently and uh, impact in large flashes of a li of light and uh, energy that basically blasts away all radiation creating a calm spot the um, anyone watching the giant creature uh, sees it flailing around blindly trying to find a any sense anything that it could latch on to uh, but that does give the scorpion enough time to depart the accretion disk eventually the turbulent energies is um, of the hmm, of the uh, pulsar fill in the accretion disk and the creature is able to once again move but it's not interested in chasing you probably because it doesn't see any of the interesting energies out there that it's used to so let's stick with these ships and let's get out of here everyone mm -hmm. so out of a grand total of 60 or so ships that attempted this, uh, you lost, uh, you lost five. Uh, that you lost three, bringing the Kythus to heal. Add another six to the um, uh, whatever I called this thing, uh, Soltian. Uh, Something. Something close to that. Uh, so, so, ah, a Solintra, the Solintra. So all in all, you've only had just about a 10%. Uh, just over 10% loss, uh, according to those amongst the Hunter fleet. That is actually pretty good. They are actually amazed that the Solintra is real. Apparently, that was a bit of a legend among the Space Hunters for a long time. They didn't think that it was actually real and was just an excuse from, you know, people straggling back after a failed hunt. Um... Before we meet up with the saucer, mm -hmm. Star Drive is going to drop a multi mission probe okay. just to monitor and scan the creature. Sure. And uh, relay the information back to us and also to DS 15. Probably a good idea. For Lisa's got a surgery to finish. 
Oh, yes. Uh, so, if uh, Fertilizer uh, can roll me those last couple... Well, we'll go to Sick Bay, where there's a decent number of people with a minor amounts of radiation. Not many. Lieutenant Crims... Or no, uh, Dr. Quiff is taking care of the radiation people. Whereas Lieutenant Krim and Dr. Ferliza are looking over uh, Virillin. So, one last control plus medicine. and Difficulty one. Difficulty one. Pretty sure no one needs to assist you with this, but Krim can if she wants. Yeah, I'll, she have, wants. I'll have Krim do it. I gotta train somebody to... Make sure she's got her stuff. And I think her internal, you know, internal medicine or ex xenobiology will still function and as a focus. Exactly. Yeah. Indeed. I don't think I need my extra dice here. Nope. No, you don't. Nope. Let's see. Yeah. Um. You know, let's let's just uh, let's see. So we're. So yeah, we have a lot. Uh, yeah. so that we have. Three, so we have one floating. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll use the floating to shave off resistance. Yeah. And because this is uh, magnet, it's already a magnitude zero task. Uh, so instead of your typical seven dice, you roll eight. Ooh, fun. Yeah. Yep, that's it. Yo. So he's going to be very weak for a while, and his damage. Uh, Nervous and control systems are going to take a bit of time in rehab. Uh, probably better to let that happen under the watchful eye of the Scorpy Healer Cult. Or Healer, not Cult. The, <laughs> healer <laughs> guild, the Healer Guild, who are, you know, know more about Scorpy stuff than you do. But at the same time, not only are you able to bring his insides pretty much up to snuff, you're able to heal uh, his uh, damaged epidermis layer that is... That had absorbed a lot of the radiation damage. Bring back that healthy, uh, dark skin shine instead of the uh, pale, flaky skin that was coating your uh, sick bay floor. <laughs> Excellent. Um, <A> shiny carapace. <laughs> Lieutenant Krim, I believe you have him. Um, I'm going to go check on our captain. Okay. Captain is just coming out of sedation. Hello, Captain. And the ship shutters just ever so, just ever so slightly as the star drive section re in, recouples with the um, saucer section. What was that? That <laughs> was. Is Medbay is in the saucer section, or are they in the star drive section? Um, until I fully come up with it, I've ruled that you guys are currently in the star drive section. I okay. assume the main med bays in the start in. I the, I the assume saucer. too, but I just wanted to clarify. Mm -hmm. well, based off the old nebula, it's actually in saucer. There's two sides of them, but I'm just yeah. Yeah, that it's makes whatever. sense. Yeah, there's probably main main sick bay is in is in saucer. Auxiliary is in star drive. <laughs> but yes, we'll worry about that later. Carry on. That would be the star drive reconnecting with the saucer. We didn't fire on ourselves again, did we? No, no. No. Luckily, if we were, we don't have a special admiral on board anymore. So. Good point. Give me a sit rep. Um, from what I've read, we have several people here with some radiation poisoning. Um, I did some surgery. Um, Mr. Varillon is just is going to be just fine. In fact, uh, he actually ended up being better than I thought he would be. And out of the 60 Scorpy ships that were involved, uh, we lost nine of them, sir. That's unfortunate. I would agree. And he'll turn around seeing Hadrix come in. Ah, I'm gonna, Commander. I'm off the med bed. <laughs> I need to get to the bridge. Uh, you're staying here until you're fully rested. 
I would tend to agree with the doctor, Captain. Commander? Good job. Cap Thank you, Captain. Ship's in one piece. The crew worked admirably and actually kind of impressed with their work. And I'm impressed with yours. I think I'm going to go night-night now. <laughs> Good night, Captain. Yes. Uh, Doctor, is he going to be okay? Yeah, I think... I think he just needs to sleep. Sounds good. And our Scorpy guest? Uh, actually... Even factoring in some of my unfamiliarity with the Scorpy biology, um, he's going to be just fine as well. Excellent. If there's anything else you need, get a hold of me up at the bridge. I'm going to do a little um, checking out of the lower decks of the saucer just to make sure uh, anyone else is okay after the potential radiation. Oh, if anyone else has been affected, uh, be sure to send them my way. Of course, Doctor. Thank you. All right. Does anyone else have anything else they'd like to do? And no, your commander's no. all set. Yep. Everyone's... The doctor's all set. All right. Yeah, Moose, Moose will pop up onto the bridge. Sure. We're up on the bridge. Uh, commander Hadrix, your time on the... Uh, your time touring the lower decks has proven fruitful. Other than a few children running around, everyone else seems to be on, on top of things. Uh, Moose. Now, are the turbo lift doors open? Lieutenant Reinhardt, a.k.a. Moose. Walks onto the bridge. Tool belt clinking. Yep, gonna walk right over and sit right down in his normal chair. So, how was it? It's a good ship. We did good. She's built good. Got a lot of heart in her. But a good crew. Yep, it, we are starting to see that. I think we're gonna be doing quite well out here. I'll try to keep everything as good as we can with the cruise side if you keep the ship going as well as it's performing right now. Oh yeah, that's the plan. Uh, we got some repairs to do on the EPS relays on the saucer side of things. The draining effect took a bit of a strain on some of the relays. So this is a duty roster for those that will be pulling to work on that. And also areas that are going to be, well, blocked off until we get those relays replaced. That sounds excellent. I'm going to get the um, rotations of the crews helped and set up, and then um, we'll try to move any civilian population away from the repair areas when you need them. Excellent. And let's see here, one last thing. Oh, yes. Uh, gamma shift. There seems to be an alternating commander on it. I would like to put myself in the rotation at least once or twice a week. You certain about that? Yeah. yeah it, was, it was fun telling people what to do in the Star Drive section. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. Uh, when we when you get a chance, you and I will have to sit down for a dinner and then we can discuss this. Well, my commander, are you asking me out? No, I am not asking you out, sir. I am just asking to sit down with a fellow crewman who probably has quite a few stories and might want to hear one or two of mine. I I'm think just breakfast giving you seriously time. needs to become a thing. <laughs> oh, God. No, I'm serious. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Nix uh, pipes up. Uh, speaking of breakfast, sirs, we're being hailed from the Huntmaster. He's wondering how much of the Kythus, we would like to claim for our own. Uh, um, can I get ten pounds? <laughs> um, Go make some let, jerky. Uh, Kythus jerky. Uh, Lieutenant Nix, um, let's uh, re respond to the Hunts Master and say whatever he believes would be a fair share for the the hunt that we were involved in. We don't want to take any more than that. That We don't want to take more than they need. 
Ten pounds. Ten pounds. Yes, sir. And make sure. I would say make sure that their needs are taken care of first. Uh, well, of course. Yes, that's what I. Yes. Mm. Thank you. That. Thank you for. Yes, that's better wording than me. Uh, she. Oh. Yep. One last thing, actually. I want to give them the frequency we used on the quantum torpedoes. They could make buoys that could generate that field to keep them safe from that big old stake. She shouldn't be that far out of their technology range. Okay. She send that away. Uh, sir, he believes that 500 pounds is more than a sufficient amount for the for our assistance, and apparently we tackled that big worm good. <laughs> uh, hunting. So interesting. Uh, uh, Lieutenant, okay, on you that note... Me, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> on that note, I, after a couple of days that I've been sick bay, I want to, like, be in my ready room, and I'm going to hang the plunger on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every captain's allowed his trinkets. Uh, sorry, what was right? that? Right? Yeah. What was that, Moose? I'm just going to ask Nyx for, like, a diagram of the uh, the creatures that we slayed, and I'm just going to find, like, the best spots of um, where to basically get the meat from. I'm oh. assuming the best spots. <laughs> It's, <laughs> it's a creature the size of a Romulan warbird. There's plenty of good meat to be found. Oh, I want I want a sampling, though. Oh, yes, right yeah. there. He, he wants the white and the dark meat. Of course. I'll... <laughs> he wants white, dark, gray, brown, pink, purple. Good ribs. Yeah. And the fluorescent blue. Yeah, okay. You can... F the uh, sampling platter is delivered by Shuttlecraft in two weeks' time. Yeah, it's a lot of meat. You will be eating health. You'll be eating uh, kythus for some time. But on that note, I think it's a good t place to call it for this for the night. So, uh, thanks all for playing. Thanks all for, thanks all for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye bye. Later. <laughs> <laughs>